for the love of the race, visit America's Best Racing. Net. Today, we say hello to our viewers on Bally SoCal San Diego from the Oakland Park Studios. He's Paul LaDuca. I'm Lafitte Pinkai. Yeah, my computer is open. We'd love to wax poetic about what a great weekend we have in store. But like right at this very moment, Paul, we don't have a lot of time. Horses on track for the fourth race just a couple minutes ago. Yeah, we got a little $30,000 non-claimer of two here with some fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upwards. And it's, listen, it's a tough betting field and a betting race. When I look towards two little... Uh, Phillies in here. The six in here, humor me, Jim. Three to one right now on the line. A horse that does possess a lot of speed, takes the blinkers off, and the 10, who they are betting Tiff with Jimmy for Robertino Diodoro. We'll be joined by our viewers on Fox Sports 2 in just a moment, so a brief pause. You've been here all meet. How, how, how have things, how, have you, has your handicapping been locked in? I hope it's just locked in today, day by day, day Lafitte. We, we need you all weekend, my friend. Again, a brief pause, welcoming in new viewers on Fox Sports 2. Our viewers, just in time for live racing. Oakland Park, Hospitals, Arkansas. Coverage is always here on America's Day at the Races, brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit America's Best Racing. .net today from the Oakland Park studios. Welcome, everyone, alongside Paul LaDuca. I'm Lafitte Pinkai. Finally, Southwest Stakes weekend. It was supposed to take place last week, some poor weather. Uh, not allowing for the racing, Polly, but uh, now we're, we're good to go. And in the end, we wind up with the best of both worlds and the best of both weekends kind of rolled into one. Yeah, we end up with a 12-horse field in the southwest. But like you mentioned, we, it turns into a tiny little little festival here. We got the Bayekoya today for the, for the boys. We got the southwest um, for the boys tomorrow. We got the American Beauty. We got the Martha Washington. We got the King Cotton tomorrow. So we got a lot of stakes action this whole weekend. And in like 10 seconds, this fourth race, we have this as well. Who'd you like? I like the six horse a little bit, Honor Me Jim. I think a horse that taking the blinkers off, I'm hoping going gate to wire. Paul going with Honor Me Jim. Let's see what the third member of our on-site broadcast team thinks. He is a Count Fleet Stakes winning jockey. Richie Migliori standing by trackside. Richie, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Lafitte. Thanks, Paul. This is It's great to be here. Beautiful day. And, uh, guys, the three horses taking money are the three that make the most sense. The uh, ten-horse tip with Jimmy, I think could play out to be maybe the speed of the speed, although you or me, Jim, the six horse could have something to say about it. Like what I'm seeing, she does have Southern California speed, tiff with me, Jimmy, uh, tiff with Jimmy, excuse me. Uh, the six horse, you or me, Jim, also has speed, but I just wonder if she's quiet, is actually quick. And honestly, I wasn't as crazy about her energy level. She was really worked up. They had her out in the winter circle, getting out of that tight paddock, which is a little claustrophobic. And her coat's a little bit turned. Now, Norm McKnight's got off to a terrific start. Horses coming off that synthetic, running well. But you and me, Jim, might have our hands full on the front with Tiff with, me, with Jimmy. What's to do? The 11 is the one that won me over in the post parade. She has high energy, but it was more feeling good than nervous. And I think the Asmussen boys can go back to back. Ready to rock and roll here. Matt Dinner and standing by with the call. Race four on the undercard of Bayakoa Friday, live on Fox Sports 2 from Oakland. The outside post. We're ready to go. And uh, we're off. Off a little bit slowly, Sisters out of Chrome. Humor Me Jim gets the first call on the lead. Strides in front. Aztec Empress shown rain to get up there. Tiff with Jimmy three deep on the course, not far off either. Birdie's Cause running in the fourth position with Sweet Mother Mary. And then Marco Sunset in the red jacket. She's five lengths off the pace and midfield. A space of four to What's to Do, along with Pavosky, who's there as well. Humor Me Jim towards the back. And I'm so funny as they approach the far turn run. The leader here, Humor Me Jim. Humor Me Jim. Jim, the leader, three quarters of a length. Aztec Empress right behind, chasing, and pressing the pace second. A length and a half to Tiff with Jimmy gets a breather, tries to come back on again. Birdie's cause inside, shaken up. Sweet Mother Mary gets to the outside. She's four lengths behind, getting pumped upon, trying to get going. Now is four wide, coming off the turn. What's to do? Has a lot of ground to make up, as do the others. They come down the lane. Humor me, Jim. Kicks to a two-length lead as something for the final furlong here. Sweet Mother Mary is coming, charging down the outside. 
outside between them. Tiff with Jimmy not going to get there. 16 to go. Humor me, Jim. Needs to hold off. Sweet Mother Mary, who's coming fast. Sweet Mother Mary on the outside. Grabs the lead late. Sweet Mother Mary to score. Sweet Mother Mary over Humor Me, Jim. Then Tiff with Jimmy. Marco Sunset next. 15 to 1 upset. Sweet Mother Mary closing like a freight train, triggering the upset in this fourth at Oakland. The heady claim here by Terry Jordan, or excuse me, Todd Jordan, who took this horse off. Doug O'Neill shipped this horse in from California, ran last time out with 7 of 12. And Kylie Jordan gets aboard, and they cash with the money here to this Philly by West Coast. Runs down Yurumi Jin, who did run well, but she just second best. Favorite having to settle for second five, six, ten in the fourth here at Oaklawn Park. We'll have those results coming up very shortly. But uh, now that we have a moment to properly set up the day, uh, we wanted to focus on the featured event, and it is the 32nd running of the Grade Three by Acoa for fillies and mares. Here's the field: mile and a sixteenth. Important race. Local prep towards a Grade One Apple Blossom. At the bottom, number nine, Shotgun Hottie. She's back. She's a good mare. The two to one. Morning line favorite, her last race, Polly. It's been a while. Last July, the Molly pitcher at Monmouth and Shotgun Hottie, like handling grade one winner search results, among others. She's very, very consistent, first of all. Uh, this mare by Gunrunner. And like you said, in the Molly pitcher, like, you know, she overcame a little bit more. You know, she's very versatile. The, the race before that in the Lady Secret, I know she was favored. Paco Lopez took no chances and took this horse gate to wire. And in the last start, Paco. You know, she got bumped at the start. She had to kind of, you know, take it taken out of her game a little bit. She's still able to run well. And here's a horse that has run okay first time out, run second fresh by a head, and has won. So in the three starts, this horse has run off a layoff. She has fired, and she's all, all grown up now. Shotgun hottie. At two to one. Then you have Hot and Sultry. Unraced since last November. Another graded stakes winner off the bench, Paul. Last seen, yeah, just running up the score in the Chalukia Churchill Downs by eight widening lengths. You know, Norm Cassie had such a, uh, I guess, embarrassment at Richmond at one time when he had Hot and Sultry. He had um, a couple other Phillies that were, were just tremendous. And, you know, on the ones and twos, and, and that Philly got injured as well. And, you know, Hot and Sultry's, I think, finally grown up a little bit, and she is going to be the mayor to catch in here. I don't think she's going to be the one to beat. And her and Shotgun Hottie, I think, will fight for favoritism. How concerned are you that she can thrive, though, at this two-turn mile and a 16th distance when she's done her best racing at, at shorter middle distances? I think that's going to be the key. She's going you know, to have to carry that speed a mile and a 16th where Shotgun Hottie has shown that she's even gone farther than that before too as well and I don't want to include out some of those other horses that are in the race too as well when it comes to Butterbean, Ice, Orchid and some of those other horses because I think a lot of people are going to look at those races and go okay that were those races good enough now to compete against Hot and Sultry and Shotgun Hottie we've seen that races over the racetrack good races over the racetrack have worked well so far at this meet. Exciting edition of the Bayacoa. Bayacoa, the two-time Breeders' Cup Distaff champ. That's race number nine, post time around 537 Eastern. And as always, we invite you to join us, play with us at Naira Bets, and take advantage of that $200 deposit match. Sign up with promo code MATCH200. Earn up to a $200 deposit match after your first deposit, but any track, anywhere, anytime. Join now, NairaBets.com to earn deposit match the schedule the rundown today's races brought to you by Claiborne Farm 100 years doing the usual unusually well up next at Oaklawn race five starts the late pick five aforementioned by Akoa race number nine and in New York final three races from Aqueduct race seven starts the cross country pick five segue we say hello Andy Serling Greg Wolf standing by at Aqueduct gentlemen good afternoon yeah, thank you, Lafitte. Paulie, good to see you guys on air. Welcome to South Ozone Park, New York, as we get set for race six coming up. Beautiful weather out there. We have sloppy going here as we get set for this sixth race coming up. Yeah, good news is it's supposed to clear up. It's supposed to be a nice weekend with our big races on tomorrow's card. I'm glad to see Oakland's finally got some good weather. Paulie certainly got his share of lousy weather there. But we had a pick six carryover. We've still got the three races, or two, three races left to go. Yeah. It's probably going to get hit from this point, though we almost had upset in the last race, and we did lose a major player from our seventh race. Yeah, maybe the best horse 
most intriguing, exciting to see come back, who we're going to have to wait for another day for Michelle Nevin. Do have a cross-country pick five as well. That begins in the next race at Aqueduct. That'll begin with the seventh race. We have the sixth, though, coming up next. Quick look here at the seventh. This does kick off that cross-country pick five. Allowance optional claiming field, the one we talked about coming out. Full Mood Madness, who probably would have been favored in this spot for Michelle Nevin with that one gone. What do you think? I think the entry will probably be favored because they both can win the race. Lord Captain is six furlongs too short. This was a very good effort off the claim by Linda Rice from Tom Amos. And I remember I was watching this with Tom and we were both amazed how game this horse was going to seven. Stretched out to a mile and a quarter, which was probably too far for him. But you have to wonder a little bit, is this too short? And I, it's maybe apples and oranges, but Linda Rice had a horse off a similar layoff earlier in today's card that was a little over bet, but still a heavy, heavy favorite that ran poorly. Will he need a race? But if he doesn't show up, it's not impossible his entry may could win. Now, this was a victory over a, or a Second narrow horse. defeat, sorry, over a, a very good horse, Colonel Bowman. It was running huge figures. I think he'd actually strung together about four wins in a row at that point. Will six be too short? As you said, that's the big question, but both parts of the entry uh, effective in that spot. And I know we both like listen to your heart, Ray Handel, second off the bench for that horse who was showing big talent last year. And he figures to be in a very good position tactically here, more so than Linda Rice's entry. That is to come. First live race from New York will be the sixth up next. $16,000 claiming race, one turn mile, and right now, Sister Linda the sixth, five to one off a three to one morning line dropping down in class. We'll have the post parade next. Just getting started on our Friday edition of America's Day at the Races. Good to have you with us. Program brought to you in part by legendary Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual. Unusually well. Sloppy going, as you can see here in New York, as we get set for race number six. And that is our current favorite in the $16,000 claiming one-turn mile. Halo City. Rob Atchis trains. Kendrick Carmouche will ride. Let's check in for the first time today downstairs with Maggie Wolfendell. And Greg, sometimes when you're dealing with these kind of lower level claimers, it can just boil down to the horses who look as though they're doing best in here, and sometimes it can't. 
So I'm just going to do my due diligence and, and talk about the horses who really just made the best impressions overall. And one of them happens to be your current favorite in number seven, Halo City. Now, the one drawback with Halo City is that she's a deep closer. And I'm not saying that the track is up against her at all today. I, I think it's a fairly fair track that we're dealing with. It's just a lot of times deep closers, they leave themselves with a lot to do and sometimes too much to do. But Rob Atris has her looking just splendid here in the paddock as she does drop in class uh, really well muscled and really her last effort wasn't bad at all she was totally out sprinted per usual and rallied well while wide down the stretch so uh, all things good for your current favorite now another one that made a great impression uh, to me is one that has been playing more at this level and needs to reach in and find her best effort to date but number one Maravilloso who I think was against the racetrack a bit the, the rail wasn't necessarily the place to be and she was kind of there the entire way and only two horses have come out of that race uh, and two of them both of them have come back to win uh, in their subsequent starts so she looks great here really healthy she's dappled head to toe uh, she is one that does generally carry a good bit of weight and conditioning that's the same thing here but great energy very forward and into the bridle now she's gonna have to try to stretch things out here looks as though they're just trying to uh, I don't want to say reinvent the wheel but you know throw something at her she does project to be forward in here. We'll see if that has any bearing or uh, on her success today, but I just thought one that might be a little bit of a price that again, like I said, Greg looks as though she's doing well. And you would think it's gonna try and show some speed stretching out from that inside post five to one on a three time winner. As we get set for the sixth at Aqueduct Post Parade when we come back. Hot Springs picks up things on the road to the Kentucky Derby on Saturday in the Southwest Maycox Bay. Dominant performance at Fairgrounds. How will that translate in a graded stake in the Southwest? And Winstock for Bob Baffert. Surprise in the low South futurity. He'll try and make it three in a row. We'll have a preview next. Olympiad leads American Revolution. Olympiad gets the gold in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Bets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one of a kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Betts. The son of Run Happy, Natala Fella, has won the hopeful. Rotney's going to win the St. Florida Sandy. It's all Rotney. Guadari to win by two and a half. Eclipse champion run happy, price for value, and standing strong at Claiborne Farm. Good to have you with us on this Friday afternoon as we get set for race six at Aqueduct and just getting started in our coverage from out in Hot Springs, Arkansas with a great three by Akoa to come in that distaff division competitive group in the feature today. This sixth race here in New York and there is a look at one Maggie was just talking about, Miravilloso stretching out sprinter going a mile now and has sprint speed. And as Maggie was saying, and I agree, was on a dead rail last time out. You know, the problem is he's got three wins um, and 25 starts, but the horse I picked and the horse who's 
you know, one of the favorites, the co-favorite right now, Halo City, just four for 40, so they're not dissimilar. Now, Halo City has many more seconds and thirds, but but I agree with what Maggie was sort of saying about her. I didn't think she'd be this short, and she's a horse that comes from way back, whereas Mira Viglioso, while she's not going to be in front, she's got enough speed to put herself at least in contention. There should be an honest pace in here. Surprising that we're seeing Vegas weekend, the four, as the favorite here? I'm a little surprised by that. She does look like the speed. I think she can win, but I'm surprised she's favored. Here's our post break. We start with the Mount of Ruben Silvera for Greg DePrima. Yeah, I, as we just talked about, I think she's a little bit um, dressed down, and she's probably going to go up from her current 6-1. to one. Well, this Justin Iquist, three starts back, 10-length winner at Aqueduct. Yeah, that was against softer, though, when she got it done. I just think these are better horses, but that was a big fig. Gringotts at 13-1. to one. Last time was the time. So here's the one who was favored, co-favored now Vegas weekend. Isn't she supposed to be the speed of the speed in this race? Looks like it. Suspended campaign at 8-1. to one. Dylan Davis rides. Unlike Vegas weekend, she's the slow of the slow. <laughs> she wins this one. She's going to come from way back. Sister Linda, surprising she's 5-1. to one. Major player taking a drop in class. Uh, you picked her on top. I put her second. I took a 7. But at these odds, I'd rather bet her at 5-1. to one. She should be forward, and she can win rating. Now the 2-1 to one favorite, Rob Atris with the 7-year-old mare, Halo City. It never occurred to me she'd be this short. I do like her. She's dropping down. She makes sense. She ran well last time. But she's a deep closer that doesn't win very often. Vintage likes to be in front, but is, is route speed and might find it tough getting there. Yeah, Vegas weekend's faster, but she could be a horse that maybe ensures a quick pace. And 31 to 1 outside Holiday, Jazz Romero Mirage aboard. Coming in from Finger Lakes. Her race is at Aqueduct, at least recently, not very good. Three minutes to post. In the six, we'll have this one for you live momentarily. Let's send it back to Hot Springs with Lafitte. All right, Greg, and yeah, you'll see that race live from Aqueduct here at Hot Springs at Oaklawn. Sweet Mother Mary, there she is. You don't see the rider, Kylie Jordan, who wins this race for her father, trainer Todd Jordan. But after pulling off the upset, uh, she was thrown from her mount, was Kylie Jordan. 32.80 for the win, 5, 6, 10 in this fourth race at Oaklawn. Richie, what else can you tell us about Kylie Jordan, what took place shortly after the upset win by Sweet Mother Mary? Yeah, so uh, Kylie actually got a ride back in the ambulance that follows the participants around. Uh, you want to talk about a dangerous job. And uh, it looked like her shoulder had popped out. She was being escorted to first aid to be evaluated and, uh, you know, make a judgment whether she would be able to continue or maybe need to go to seek further treatment at the hospital. She was more concerned about the fact that she did not get to get in the winner's circle picture with the horse typical jockey mentality these men and women are just so tough Lafitte that's what she was most concerned about Paul and for that win a first at the meet for her father trainer Todd Jordan and for Kylie Jordan uh, Greg yeah a microcosm of the the highs and lows in the sport of thoroughbred racing Lafitte no question and the man reporting on that Richard Migliori <laughs> Uh, he knows better than anyone so many injuries throughout his career. Uh, just incredible how he was able to bounce back time after time. I, I can safely say that Richie is as tough as it comes. I mean, that guy had a lot of bad luck. But somewhere in the midst of having all that bad luck, he won over 4,500 races. How many he would have won if he didn't have all that bad luck is up to conjecture. But it would have been a lot more. Set for this sixth here coming up and still your favorite. It is the seven who you see on your screen. Halo City, Kendra Carmouche will be aboard. Let's go back to Maggie. Yeah, Greg, and maybe it's a reason to condemn Sister, Sister Linda that she's such a big price in here, but I, I can't resist because, yes, I talked about Miravilloso and uh, number seven, Halo City, looking great, but Sister Linda was right up there with them. And furthermore, she has great energy. She's very into the bridle, kind of tugging her handlers around. Same thing overflow to the racetrack here with Jose Gomez aboard. Uh, she just seems like she's ready to get out there and strut her stuff. Now, uh, it also projects, as you guys were talking about, the pace that she might sit the right trip where she's not going to be completely out sprinted, but she's not going to mix it up on the front end. So maybe it puts her right there in that uh, preferred catbird seat, and she does trip out here. So at 6-1, to one, I'm willing to find out. Greg? I think we're all surprised, even 5-1, to one, that, that she's that number. The six-horse sister Linda dropped down in class for Michelle Nevin. 
one who also has won on the lead, but has shown the ability to win sitting just off the pace as well. Yeah, that's the thing. She's shown the ability to rate and still win. And to be honest, I was between the six and seven, and I already made one bad decision. I thought the seven would be a bigger price than the six. Now, in the morning line, the seven was three to one, the six was seven to two, very similar. This kind of difference, I would be with you guys in the six. I use both of them to start some late pick threes. Here's one of the speeds as we touched on Vegas weekend. Luis Rivera Jr. on board. Seven-time winner from 28 starts. Who will be the aggressor when the gates open here? Let's go upstairs. Chris Griffin with the call of the six from Aqueduct. All set. Meta Biglioso breaks with the early speed at the rail, and there's Vintage up on the far outside. It's, they're going to be 1-2. Joining them is Holiday Jazz as progressing moves up on these leaders, and here comes Sister Linda with some kick as well. Four across the racetrack, well spread out as they get set to come out of the chute. Here's Sister Linda right to the outside here of Vintage. They're now 1-2, and joining them, there's Meta Biglioso to make it three across the track. Holiday Jazz, Romero Mirage is going to stock off of them as in the fourth spot out in the center. Then comes Vegas Weekend, who's tucked in behind rivals, is in fifth. Further back comes Halo City, who's in six. Encouraged to move forward as Justin Nyquist is not making up the ground right now. Gringotts is towards the back end of the field, and the late runner suspended campaign is the trailer. 24.33 for the opening quarter mile. Meta Biglioso has got a nose in front, now a neck in front. It's Meta Biglioso coming right back as Vintage to the outside, and Vintage has kicked on. 48.31 for that half mile time, and Vintage at 5 to 1 has put away Meta Biglioso, but Vegas Weekend is in the two path, is chasing with Sister Linda. Here comes a move from Halo City, and Halo City is tipping outside. Four wide, and Halo City's the one that's got the momentum. Halo City has got Vintage in sights. It's Vintage who's up by two. They're approaching a quarter mile left to go. It's Vintage and the favorite. Halo City well out in the far outside. They are about in the sixth, seventh path there, but Halo City just slingshots to the front, and now Halo City is kicked away. It is Halo City who made that move into the turn, and Halo City is opening up. Halo City is just striding away. A quick look back. No danger in sight. Kendra Carmouche, Halo City. Just going to gear down and win this one easily as the favorite. Tight here for a second. There's a late run there, Holiday Jazz, to the inside of Vegas weekend. And just an Iquist in one minute, 41 and four. Riders staying away from that inside. Look, wow, <laughs> how wide were they going around this turn? Halo City dominant here in the six. And we've seen horses run very well on the inside in this car, but this was one where the eight was drifting and the rider just wanted to be outside of that one. But, uh, you know, you kind of knew that Halo City was probably going to win when Kendrick had her only about five lengths off the lead down the back stretch. She's really rarely that close. And I'll say something else, they knew. <laughs> uh, you know, they just knew she was gonna run today. And this was like Rob Atras when his barn's going well and there's this confidence in them. And around the three ace pole, you kind of knew she was going to win this he, one easily. Rob Atris, the trainer, had this streak. It was similar time last year. I think he won, what, eight races in a row? He had some run like that, yeah. And it's just like they were betting them like they just knew they were going to win. And this was no no, no, no contest. And the longest shots on the board, running second. He's nice close to 40% early on at this meet this year. Let's go back to Hot Springs. They knew indeed, Greg. Much more from Aqueduct. Cross country picked five starts in the seventh post parade time here. Oakland race five, and you're looking at Honey Pat. This is a horse that's actually been prepared actually in Louisiana. Delta Downs does have one work here at Oakland Park. Latifa, the current two to one favorite, six to one in her debut, and didn't fire. Yeah, getting bet though. She was, like you said, bet a little bit in her debut, comes back with a decent work, but drops her maiden special weight. First class girl, first class rider for her first race. Yeah, Philly by double Irish does get Christian Torres. Dr. Woods Miracle at 10 to 1. No, Horset was third, two back going long. Famous Tail struggled in two sprints at Sam Houston. There she is. You could hear Hernandez aboard, a young rider that's on his up and up. Robina at 6 to 1. You know, Robina actually ran into a tough group last time. Maybe the drop will help. Can't he run? Can't I run? You like her a little bit, Paul? Um, yeah, I like her a tiny bit. She was, you know, didn't break well, but she ran even in her first stop. Now the drop. Tis a strategy idle since last April. Yeah, we're going to get Ramsey Zimmerman aboard uh, this runner for Timothy Martin. 
And number 11, Miracle Shoes, Chelsea Bailey in the saddle. You know, this is a horse uh, dropping too as well. Tom Swearington gotten off to a slow meet, but a very capable trainer. Texas Sequoia facing softer today. And another horse here for the timeless Johnny Court. Uh, was 101 first time out. Not going to get that today at 6-1. to one. Graduation day for one of these Arkansas bred fillies and mares. Post time in about five minutes. Meantime, uh, don't look now, but we're just about three months from the 150th Kentucky Derby. And tomorrow, a massive day on this road to the Derby. No less than four preps coast to coast. The Southwest here, Withers in New York, Lewis out west, and in Florida, Holy Bull featuring the two-year-old champ fierceness in his three-year-old debut. But here at Oaklawn, cue the animation. It is the America's best racing's race of the week. The lucrative $800,000 grade three Southwest Stakes. Big field, wide, wide open. 42 derby points available. 20 to the winner. Uh, number one, Godolphins, Maycox Bay. Three to one morning line favorite, Paul. And this is a big part of the reason why his last race, January 7th, fairgrounds in this fast front running score. Well, he exploded this day. You know, his other really good start when you look at it you can honestly say was his race over a sloppy racetrack at parks and that was going six and a half furlongs so there's two things here this is a horse that was an off the turf event it was his second time going long did he really excel that much and he got lasix that day now he will not mm -hmm. have lasix tomorrow will that change as well you just cannot deny when a horse wins by this much and gallops out and looks like he wants to go on even more but I do think he will not be three to one. I think he's the kind of horse that a lot of betters might bet against. And much, yeah, much more speed on paper in the Southwest, Paul. Like if pressured by better, faster horses, how will Maycox Bay respond? Well, yeah, that's going to be the key. He does get a great draw um, if he's able to settle. And Francisco Arrieta, who will be his new pilot, is able to get him to settle. If Carbone goes, if some other horses go, Otto the Conqueror, there is some speed signed up. Another factor, he's hard to ride. Pulls at the rider, fights the rider, something to watch right from the start. And then you have the California Invader in Winstock, trained by Bob Baffert, Paul, the 13 to 1 front running winner of the Los Alamitos Futurity last December. Well, you know, Bob Baffert's so good. They jump off the Bob Baffert train so quickly, it's unbelievable. This horse was almost 9 to 5 in his debut, did not run well. Did not run well again over a wet fast track. And they said, you know what? We're done with Bob's horses. 13 to 1 wins and then comes back <laughs> in the Lost South Futurity. And this was actually a pretty gutty win. Um, and, I, you know, this is a New York bred by Salamini. You don't pay 700000 for that many. So maybe the talent's starting to come forward now. Bob Baffert has said he kind of reminds him of Salamini, Winstock. Um, and remember, Baffert trained runners uh, are not eligible for Kentucky Derby points. Baffert still suspended by Churchill Downs. It all dates back to the disqualification of Medina Spirit in the 2001 Kentucky Derby. Medication violation resulting in a two year suspension set to expire last July. But Churchill Downs has extended the suspension until the end of this year, citing, quote, concerns regarding the threat to the safety integrity of racing he poses to CDI on tracks, Paul. So this is going to be the third consecutive year. Baffert has not been able to run horses in the Kentucky Derby. But how is it different this time? You know, I don't know. I mean, they're pulling the horses a little bit earlier and earlier. And, you know, I don't know how you can equate it to the real world. Is this kind of like a team that's not qualifying for the NCAA tournament because it's under violations, but it's taking wins from other people that might get in? Um, this could be a horse that's going to take points from other horses to get in to the big dance. And you don't need points for Preakness, which he won last year with National Treasure, and then obviously National Treasure just won the Pegasus. But it is what it is. You know, I mean, he's keeping his horses. His horses are not transferring. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to see that this year. Um, I think he wants to protect his horses a little bit more and have a closer eye on them. A show of solidarity amongst the uh, owners for Bob Baffert, Winstock, major contender in tomorrow's Southwest Stakes. Meantime, two minutes out to this fifth race at Oakland, start of the late pick five. Richie standing by trackside. Richie, uh, one of those, a little will go a long way in this one, my friend. 
Uh, yeah, no, no doubt. And I mean, listen, they're, they're betting uh, Latifa off of a, a poor effort. I didn't see much visual excuse. She was able to get her position forwardly. She did take money on debut, but she takes that drop in class to the maiden 20, which is a significant drop in class. I preferred uh, the eight. Can't I run? Also making that drop in class. I thought she had uh, showed more run and a bigger effort on debut. And I think she really looked good in the post parade, in the warm up. I just really, she won me over. I like the, the eight horse can't I run tell you I got to give high marks to Harry Hernandez who rode the five fabulous tail he did some job just staying in the middle of this filly she got up in the air and uh, I like riders that can ride you have jockeys that can ride races I admire jockeys that can ride horses and this guy did a great job Harry Hernandez is the only rider that is you know, consistent in this colony that has won over 200 races last year. He won 206 races on the year. No other jockey state that is stationed here in this colony won that many races. You've got Manny Franco shipping in today, won 241 races last year to lead the standings on the Naira circuit. And we always got to give a, a shout out to John Court on the 12 Texas Sequoia. Sharp looking filly, warmed up without the pony. She's also making that drop in class. And guys, I've got a new nickname for John Court. It's Ponce, as in Ponce de Leon, the guy who discovered the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> Johnny will love that. It's better than ageless. I, I think I it's better than ageless. I think I wrote a, a thesis on Ponce de Leon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Harry Hernandez is a, a guy that was spending his time between Tur Paradise and Canterbury. Mm -hmm. He was actually represented by Scott Stevens, who's the all-time winningest rider in Turf Paradise history. Now Cody Autry is his uh, agent, and he's been getting a lot of Robertina Diodoro mounts. He's a young rider, like Mig said, with a ton of talent. Harry Hernandez, and you wound up with Can't I Run, yes? Yeah, we went, landed on the same horse, the eight. I do get where they're going with the two. You know, it seems like these horses that have dropped from maiden special weight down in this 20 is a bigger, bigger drop, even with these Arkansas breads, than it is with normal maidens too as well. Saw a 15 to one shot strike in the fourth, a 16 to one shot, tis a strategy. Ramsey Zimmerman taking over for Kylie Jordan involved in that spill shortly after the win, the upset in the fourth here at Oaklawn Park. Matt Denneman standing by with the remainder of the load and call start of the late pick five live from Oaklawn Park. Miracle Shoes, Texas Sequoia to the outside post. Here's Texas Sequoia. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff, a little bit of a tardy break from a couple of runners. Dr. Wood's Miracle, first class girl. Those two drop to the back. Latifa has the most speed, kicks to a three quarter length lead. Can't I run second with Miracle Shoes alongside. Honey Pat down on the inside, a length and a quarter off the leader here, the gray. Latifa, who's off the fence with about a half mile left to go. A gap of two to first class girl, settling in midfield. Two lengths clear of Robina and Texas Sequoia. Another three to Tiza Strategy. Dr. Dr. Woods Miracle, they're side by side. Fabulous tail drops to the rear, has to get going with three furlongs to go. Latifa still has a lead. The margin's only about a neck here. Here comes Miracle Shoes in the three path to turn up the pressure. Can't I run between that pair? And those three open up two lengths. In the fourth spot, first class girl sent along is moving up four wide in the clear at the top of the lane. The others are well out of it as they come down the lane. Latifa, a nose in front of Can't I Run and Miracle Shoes on the outside on the scene. Miracle Shoes soars to the front. Can't I run second? Latifa left behind. Robina's coming up the inside and Texas Sequoia on the extreme outside, but it's Miracle Shoes. Miracle Shoes. Chelsea Bailey close to the line and it's going to get tight. Miracle Shoes held on. Miracle Shoes over Texas Sequoia and then Robina and Dr. Woods Miracle. Wild finish. Cavalry charge through the stretch. Back-to-back -back upsets at Oaklawn. 15 to one shot in the fourth and a 11 to one shot here. Miracle Shoes and Chelsea Bailey to kick off the late pick five. Yeah, this comes from, of course, comes from a very good family of Arkansas breads and she was able to get home. Texas Sequoia and Johnny Court exploding in the middle of the racetrack. It's gonna have to settle for second in here. But if you had this pick five, this early pick five, $75,000 for 50 cents. And that's been the theme at this meet. It's been really, really tough handicapping. But if you've been right, 
you've been rewarded very, very handsomely. And for Tom Swearingen, Chelsea Bailey, haven't been winning a lot of races, but we've seen this combo be productive here at Oaklawn in the past. Yeah, 100%. Tom Swearingen, like I said in the post parade, he's a very good conditioner and just needs a couple of his horses to get some races into him. And this is another mare, like I said, comes from a very good family. Her sister's a very good runner, and she finally gets the job done. Class drop results in a 12 to 1 win. Miracle Shoes graduates in her sixth career start. We'll have those results in just a moment. And while the racing does continue here at Oaklawn Park, uh, many here, specifically those who work on the backstretch, are doing so with a very heavy heart. Perfecto Diaz, a longtime groom and hot walker uh, known all over the Midwest, died last Friday in a training accident. Diaz, extremely popular, born in Mexico, leaves a family behind. Donations for funeral and burial costs can be sent to the Arkansas Racetrack Chaplaincy. Perfecto Diaz, gone at the age of 55. Lake Hamilton, just two miles south of Oaklawn Park, one of two man-made lakes in the area. You knew that already, Paul. 18 miles long, one of I the hope. most popular fishing and boating lakes in Arkansas. Gorgeous shoreline. Interested in property, condos, hotel, restaurant? Contact Paul Duca. Get off my dad. At, at, at Paul Duca 16, he'll take care of you. <laughs> Just two miles from uh, Oaklawn Park and here in the winner's circle. That at 12 to 1. Miracle Shoes drops in class. Bailey and Swearingen strike in the fifth at Oaklawn. Yeah, congratulations to this mayor by Commander Shoes at the Summer Squall Mayor Summer Symphony. As you see Chelsea Bailey go to work. For a lot of you people who don't know Chelsea Bailey, started out as an MMA fighter. And yeah, she's tough as nails. She trains still to this day. Um, and tributes her husband too as well. He is a super dude, by the way. You, it's, it's crazy how, you know, she's an MMA fighter, but she's got that soft tone. When she gets on a horse, she can get down on her belly and she can flat out ride. And she got the, the job done here. 2780 on top. Over a late charging Texas Sequoia, 11 12 7. Shaking things up to kick off the late big five here at Oaklawn Park. Miracle Shoes in race number five. We go back to Aqueduct, Greg, and Gearing up for this cross-country pick five. 
quite as lucrative as what we just saw in the first five at Oakland. $75,000 return on that early pick five at Hot Springs, but you never know. Starts with the seventh at Aqueduct, includes the eighth, and then races eight, nine, and ten, including that Bayacoa from Oakland. Yeah, the Bayacoa came a really, really fun race. And, of course, that's a, one of the preps for their grade one apple blossom, one of the very biggest races of the meet. Um, in this race... If somebody wins this race, other than the two betting entries, I should say, the 1 and 1A one and the 6, it's going to blow up the payoffs. And this pick 6 is almost certain to be hit at this point. But anybody other than them would almost guarantee a pretty substantial payoff. Six furlongs to kick off this cross country. An allowance optional claiming field. And it is listen to your heart right now. Even money favorite. And as you mentioned, the entry, second choice of nine to five. Those two dominating the wagering here. Listen to your heart for Ray Handel, seven-year-old who came back off about a six-month layoff last time out. Ran a good effort. Second off the bench. Maybe even tougher to beat. Let's head downstairs to Maggie. Yeah, checking in, though, with one coming off of a layoff for his first start since Saratoga is number one Lord Captain, part of that entry for Linda Rice, along with Power Seeker. Now, Lord Captain's going to turn back in distance quite significantly from the mile and a quarter to the six furlongs today, which is distance uh, he has yet to uh, really be competitive at, though. If you look three back, he or four back, he does have the win, albeit around two turns at Delta Downs going the six and a half furlongs. I, I think this is just a starting point for him. He really gives the impression that that one turn mile or just kind of that distance more so is preferable for him. He's a very tall, leggy type of horse. Now, maybe he's going to turn out to be an atypical <clears throat> type of sprinter. He does come in here with great energy. He's very forward and engaged in the paddock, uh, and he does look fit. He makes a great impression. Otherwise, it just feels like this is going to be a little too sharp for him, though I did question the mile and a quarter. I thought that would be too far for him. Um, and as you saw, he was up close, and then he really kind of flattened out. He couldn't sustain that bid. So maybe they're they're taking the other approach here and, and maybe trying to turn him into more of that kind of one run closer. We'll see what he does here. Um, closing sprinter, I should say, is at number six, listen to your heart, much more established uh, at this type of distance. And he's one that I thought going back to that first start off the bench on December 31st really needed a start. And he ran exactly that same way. He was close to a pace that... Uh, basically held together with Andiambo or Firenze being on top of it. He was stalking an American Monarch right behind it. He was the one who came up short. Uh, he, he ran exactly like I, I thought he would, and he just needed to tighten her. Looks as though it's benefited him. We'll see what he does here as he is taking quite a bit of money, Greg, but all things point in his favor. Thank you, Maggie. And that's the pilot who will be aboard. Katie Davis will ride for Ray Handel. Ray says, let's be aggressive early and try and take control of this race from the outset. We'll have the post parade for you when we kick off this cross country pick five with a seventh from Aqueduct. When we come back to South Ozone Park, New York, stay with us. Breeders' Cup champion, Good Magic, by Sire of Sires, Curlin, was the sire of first crop Kentucky Derby champion, Mage, one of three grade one winners to date, along with Muth and Blazing Sevens. In 2023, with just two crops to race, Good Magic ranked 21st on the general sire list with nine and a half million in earnings. Two-year-old sold for up to $2 million, and yearling sold for up to $725,000. Good Magic, the classic sire. The Phasing Tipton Kentucky Winter Mixed Sale. The last mixed sale before the start of the breeding season. Featuring a deep catalog of quality racing and broodmare prospects, yearlings, and mares in foal to the sport's leading sires. Plus 65 entries of breeding stock and yearlings from the complete dispersal of Lothenbach stables. Recent sale graduates include grade one winner, Adair Manor. Kentucky Winter Mixed, February 5th and 6th at Phasing Tipton in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? This is Maxfield. This is a Maxfield foal. Maxfield, the G1 Breeders Futurity and G1 Clark Hero by Street Sense. Maxfield foal. They're just like him. Walking, standing, looking perfect, and selling. 
This one made $500,000, the most by any freshman in 2023. Maxfield, he's the best in his field. Inquire now. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, from every track, on every screen, every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Back with you on our Friday coverage, America's Day at the Races, and this in our near future. We're getting closer every day. Belmont Stakes at Saratoga. Purse raised to $2 million, and the hype around this event, like we've not seen in quite some time, with it moving to upstate New York. There's always so much talk of, you know, looking forward to Saratoga, and it's such an important part of the racing program here and everywhere. But this year is even more special. Looking forward to that special Belmont Stakes while we're rebuilding Belmont Park. Next couple of years up in Saratoga, it's going to be an amazing, amazing weekend. Obviously, one of the great moments we've seen in this sport right there. First female trainer in the history of the Triple Crown to win an event, Jenna Antonucci. You see what happens this year with us on set. Good to have you back. Third generation horseman Carlos Martin did such a tremendous job with Come Dancing. It was a multiple graded stakes winner just a few years ago. Good to see you again. Thank you guys for having me again. And I want to say your dad won a Belmont Stakes with Summit. No, that's Louis Barrera. That was Louis Barrera. That was the year that Noble Nasher ran and uh, Pleasant yeah. County. That was when I first started really, you know, really enjoying the races. And dad had such a great year in 81 with Wayward Lass and Noble Nashua. It was a spectacular year for Mr. Lizza, which was a big supporter of the family for many years, Flying Z Stable. And your grandfather trained a horse that's fairly well known for losing in the Triple Crown races. Many people may not realize he trained. Sham. Hall of Famer, by the way, mm. your grandfather. Let's get yeah. to this post parade. Here's the two mid laner. This one coming in from Parks for the seventh race. Yeah, and you and I talked about this earlier, Greg. Mid laner is a horse that's run well enough out of town to be competitive here. Can he bring his form here, though? Jake Rocks, we see now with Romero Mirage, Dominic Chitino. If he's live, he's forward, but he hasn't run since October when he did not finish. It's the biggest price on the board here, life changer. I don't know why he's the biggest price on the board. I picked him third. I don't, I, I'm surprised he's not third choice, to be honest. Had a good win in an A other than at Belmont back in June of last year. Here's the six. Listen to your heart. Odds on favorite. He's supposed to be forward, if not in front, outside of Jake Rocks in this race. Second off a layoff. This is a horse whose good race is maybe just too much for this field. Three to five Whoa. right now. It's the power of Greg Wolf. <laughs> don't think that's Short the, the number. Greg Wolf selection. Right here for the Ray Handle Barn. Katie Davis will be aboard, but Carlos, both halves of this entry, did you see both halves having a very big shot to win this race? Uh, Linda's done such an unbelievable job claiming these horses from Kentucky. She's one of the few trainers, I think, in recent memory that has taken horses from Brad Cox, Todd Pleasure, some of the greats of the game, and has had a lot of success. I thought Power Seeker might sit the right trip. Uh, of course, I was going to take the easy way out after the uh, favorite, uh, what we thought might be the favorite, Michelle Devon was scratched. And the more I looked at the race, I just wasn't sure if I wanted to trust Listen to Your Heart at such a short price. So I like Power Seeker with Liscano cutting back and thought he has uh, room to improve only four lifetime races off a 91 buyer speed figure. You ever get in a situation where you, you're training an entry and um, maybe there's more ownership on one than the other and kind of the wrong one wins or, and, and, and you have an owner who's, you've just won a race and an owner who's a little annoyed <laughs> at you? <laughs> Unfortunately, when you're training for public stable, it does ha tend to happen, especially in Saratoga, it seems, in those maiden special weights when you bet the other, <laughs> the other horse that's not being talked about as much. You know, they talk about, you, you, you watch NFL football and they say all the time it's a copycat league. Is horse racing like that somewhat? You see Linda Rice having all the success, claiming horses in Kentucky and coming here and having so many wins. Are other trainers, is that on their radar now more? Well, I think it's obviously something that she had never, no, nobody's ever done anything like that to that scale. I think she claimed 30, 35 horses last uh, few years there in Kentucky. So I'm, I'm sure the Kentucky people a little bit more <laughs> on their toes a little bit. And they actually changed the rule. They called it the Linda Rice rule, where I believe now you have to wait 60, 80 days, whether yeah. the meet's over or not. So, yeah, I'm not so sure if anybody else uh, will be able to do what Linda Rice uh, has been able to do. But it certainly uh, brought a lot of attention to uh, the, the claiming game in Kentucky, moving forward to the horses, how much they've improved for her in New York. Let's check in quickly with Maggie. 
taking a look at the 1A power seeker as he does turn back in distance. Look, he's built much more like a sprinter. Now, he was flattered too back with the win as he was very much with the racetrack being an insidey type of day. Uh, he didn't rally late after being well behind last time out, but I do like the turn back at a great warm up on track. I want to touch on the Parks Invader. That's number two, mid laner coming in here from Michael Moore. Look, Mike's horses always are brought over here looking fantastic and mid laners just another one of those. He's going to have to improve and be better second off of a layoff. We'll see if he takes a step back, but I thought a really good effort last time where the second place finisher winning time was the one dominating on the front end and he rallied from well off to get up and get the win. We'll see if there's another move forward in him, Greg. Maggie, thank you. Loading up and as Andy just pointed out, off air here, yeah, the entry, Lord Captain, and that outside 1A power seeker, even money favorite. Pretty amazing. They were 4 to 5 and 9 to 5 when we were talking two minutes ago. Late money on the 1. Greg and I are sticking with the 6, but you and Maggie, it's Greg and I against you and Mag. Let's go upstairs. Chris Griffin with the call. We kick off the cross country pick 5 here. Broke it a very even line. They are lined up here. It's going to be mid laner down towards the inside that shows some early speed. Listen to your heart is going to be in that early mix and out wider. That's Power Seeker. It's listen to your heart now a neck in front. Katie Davis, they've got the lead, but they have company. Power Seeker right to the outside and mid laner's the gray. It's going to be at the rail here in third. Life Changer progresses, has moved up into fourth. Is just moving along here. Has taken that fourth position under a snug hold. Then Jake Rocks is towards the tail end of the field with Lord Captain. The trailer pretty tightly bunched though. Three lengths to cover them all. 23 and three for the opening quarter mile. Listen Listen to your heart has got the lead. Listen to your heart is now fending off Power Seeker, who's under encouragement here from second. Mid laner moves to the inside of that rival. Then Life Changer is not making up some ground from the back. Jake Rocks is under a full drive. Same can be said for Lord Captain. Listen to your heart is well out into the middle of the racetrack and wide open down towards the inside. It's mid laner. Mid laner's got sights on the leader. Listen to your heart is in front, but here comes the great mid laner down towards the inside as they approach a final furlong. Listen to your heart is trying to gut it out. Mid laner is just inching closer here as they approach the 16th pole. Listen to your heart is almost there. Mid laner's going to try one final time. Listen to your heart. Mid laner, these two down the line. Listen to your heart. Holds off mid laner. Then came Power Seeker finished third and Life Changer in one minute 12 and three. Listen to your heart got all he could handle from this Parks shipper mid laner. Comes down to those two, but listen to your heart, picks up the sixth win of his career. You often see when the track's wet, riders really staying away from the rail, but I think there's been a theme day, and, and to be fair, the two's in about the three path. It's not like the three, which was on the rail, but we have seen horse run well on or near the inside throughout today's card, but Katie Davis wanted to stay outside, and it was close. Yeah, it was definitely close at the end. Katie Davis. Has had a lot of success for Ray Handel. She put the source on the lead where he was supposed to be, and uh, he, he gave a really good scare at the end there. I, was, I thought the horse was going to draw off, but the horse from the, uh, the inside, the park shipper, ran tremendous. How much, Carlos, on days like this, are you paying attention to the track and talking to your riders, or do you let them sort of handle it with the way they ride? Well, I think what was uh, one of the great Hall of Fame trainers, I don't know if it was Lucas or Baffert, that said the great jockeys don't need the instructions and the bad ones won't follow them anyway. But <laughs> I like uh, what Andy always says, try to be forward, try to be aggressive, especially on these kind of race tracks. You know, you hate to take away your horse's natural speed. And especially on this kind of track, the kickback always seems to play a big factor. So you want to be forward. Well, I think I saw a good example of that in the first race today, where the winner last time wasn't handling the track because he was raiding and he was taking kickback. And today, putting the horse on front, the horse ran very, very well on the front end. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I sometimes think that trainers don't want to be too precise in their instructions to jockeys. That way they can blame them when the horse loses. But if they were too <laughs> precise, they can't blame the jockey as readily. Not all trainers, Carlos. Not saying you. Listen to your heart with the win. Second choice. It's seven to five. We're underway in the cross country. Pick five. Let's go back to Hot Springs. Whatever the game plan was, it worked out for Listen to Your Heart. Meantime, here at Oaklawn, the sixth race, these $30,000 claimers, non winners, three lifetime, all two for something, three quarter of a mile sprint, and the current favorite. There's a silver lining at nine to five. We start with Carisha, claim from Scott Becker by Mike Pewich. Yeah, two for seven lifetime. Does have four second place finishes, but has burnt a little chalk 
Uh, aforementioned favorite, there's a silver lining leading rider Christian Torres. And Tommy Vance with this horse. This horse actually broke slow last time in a Lev Norris field and rushed up. And I think that's why you're getting a lot of money on this filly. Tyrona, 12 starts last year, 2024 debut, then wings from above, very quick leaving the gate. Yeah, the two and the four are fast. The three Tyrona went through had a wide trip last time. Look for a better trip today. Yeah, our bet's been spinning her wheels. Yeah, she has been. She's over for four the last two years, two for 11 lifetime. Singing Emma struggled at this level New Year's Day. You know, she didn't break well out of that race. Now they drop. This is the lowest she's been in when she won for 12-5. Val claimed from Steve Asmussen by Timothy Martin and then she Shell shock. Speaking of the Asmussen's, Keith riding for his dad. And they dropped this one, this mare by American Pharaoh. She's seven years old, 0 for 9 in the last two years. The princess says tactical speed, fourth facing similar New Year's Day. Yeah, I think this horse has got a little bit of a look, a little Philly by collect. At least she's lightly raced compared to the others. Lady Commander Chelsea Bailey looking for back to back wins. Yeah, this one for Jinx Fires. And I would think with the drop in class, you'll see this mare run a little better. Lanterns Candy, uh, Kylie Jordan off. Uh, Francisco Arietta takes the call. She's only been claimed eight times in her 18 race career. So, career. so somebody sees something with her in Portillo Racing. And Lindsay Schultz, listen, she's a sharp mm -hmm. trainer. She can get one off the layoff. I know this is since May, but there's no way this horse should be 12 to 1. Who will earn that third lifetime win? We'll find out in six minutes. Another look at Shell Shock. The Asmussen's Steve with just uh, one runner. In this race, <clears throat> and two in tomorrow's Southwest Stakes. Asmussen looking to pad those Southwest stats. Already a three-time winner from Silver Prospector, Tapature, and Private Emblem back in 2002. Uh, will he rack up a fourth tomorrow? It might be with this Colt Paul. Carboni, talented, fast, undefeated, untested. Yeah, you know, he really was. And you know what the thing about him is, in both of his starts, he has been so professional out of the gate. His, his first start at Churchill Downs, I mean, he outbroke the field by through three lengths. I remember telling myself, can he do the same thing in his next start? And he did. He just outbroke everybody and just took him gate to wire. And people will say, well, there was no pressure. He's the type of horse that's already, he puts separation on you in the first quarter of a mile, or at least out of the gate. Um, so he's a very good gate horse. You look at his pedigree, Matoli out of a street sense mare. And the horse has been working well for Steve Asperson. And he usually knows what he's doing with a good horse. You said it. What a pro. Makes everything look so easy. Carboni. And then his stable mate, Otto the Conqueror, who's conquered in three of four, Paul, including this knockdown drag out in the Springboard Mile in December. I thought this was a good race. And I think the Springboard Mile sometimes gets overlooked over time. This was a gutty win. I know it got a slowish type number. Uh, this horse is running back-to-back -back races where the racetrack has been a tiny bit muddy. I don't know if when you look at it now, it looks like it was might have been tiring. He might have got a lot out of that race. And another son of Street Sense. Now, he shows speed. And you'll see who's faster, Carboni or Otto the Conqueror. I thought it was key that, that he did pass a horse mm -hmm. in that springboard mile because on paper, Otto the Conqueror, while he is quick, I think some others are quicker. He's going to have to prove that he can be effective and, and pass horses once again at a higher level. Well, I think the thing that happens, especially with you getting into these horses, these three-year-old levels, and we're getting to the horses that are coming to the Kentucky Derby, I think a lot of people get excited when a horse wins by eight, nine lengths, and they don't get that excited when a horse wins by a neck or wins by a little bit. I think that's actually a, a better type win than jogging around the racetrack and winning by eight, nine lengths. I get it. A horse like Fierceness, who ran an unbelievable number in the Breeders' Cup, that's different. But when I'm talking about a horse in a maiden race compared to something else where they've grinded out a win. Otto the Conqueror, named after Gonzalo Torrealba's youngest son, Gonzalo the Chairman of Three Chimneys Farm. Richie, that's tomorrow's Southwest Stakes, where Asmussen has a strong pair. What about Shell Shock here in the upcoming sixth? Well, one thing you can always count on from the Steve Asmussen runners is just his horse is looking good. I mean, he's just a world-class horseman. Now, on paper, I don't particularly like this daughter of American Pharaoh. It's really kind of hard to believe that you have a seven-year-old American Pharaoh. I know it's been a while, but it feels like yesterday that he won the Triple Crown, ending that long drought. Um, 
And guys, I'm old enough, I was actually there for Seattle SLU, Affirmed, and so on. But um, I, she looks great. And, and I can't imagine what it feels like for Steve giving a leg up to his son Keith and Keith getting to ride for his father in his father's colors. They're world-class horsemen, the whole Ashmussen family. Uh, and, I, you know, it's been a privilege to know them their whole life, starting with Cash, uh, who went on and just revolutionized the way riders rode in Europe, particularly in France. The um, four horse wings from above. Norm McKnight's horse has been running well. Horses coming off of the synthetic at Woodbine, getting to the dirt here. His horses consistently show speed, and he's got the right rider. Ramsey Zimmerman is a guy who likes to allow horses to show speed. He lets them roll along, and I think that fits the way Norm McKnight trains and the way he likes his horses ridden. That brings us to my top selection, the three, Tyrona. This is a horse that me and Paul are here on December 30th. Rocco Bowen and Bias kind of gave us a wink and a nod. Horse ran extremely well at 48 to 1 that day with excuses. Had a tough trip, drops in class. She wears those distinctive red and, uh, I mean, excuse me, white and blue black blinkers, very reminiscent of Secretariat. Don't everybody get up in an uproar. I'm not comparing her to Secretary by any means, just the blinkers. And I think Tyrone has taken a meaningful drop in class. And if she works out a decent trip, she could be heard from. And right now, six to one. I think that's fair, Paul. Pa Paul agrees. Yeah, I like this horse. Listen, he's completely right. So Rocco got off this horse and he was really, really, truly upset. The horse was making a giant move. And a horse was really lugging out in this path, took a lot of his, um, I want to say he went like seven or eight wide. It cost him probably third or fourth, but he was rolling at 44 to one. Now they drop a little bit and the numbers fit. They do need a little uh, pace tool in here. And Kim can get a horse ready. He's very, very good at that. You know, he's another horse kind of like Swearington, who won the last race, Tom Swearington. He's very good conditioner, just a matter before they pop. Um, if this horse gets some, you know, pace to run into, Tyrona's going to be running late here with Rocco Bowen, who's a, who's a type of rider that likes to stalk and pounce, and hopefully this horse can save some ground today. Just playing devil's advocate, where do you want to see her early? It feels like she's been most effective, showing speed in longer races, middle distance mm -hmm. races, and now here she is mixing it up with some quicker horses in a sprint. I wouldn't mind her being fifth or sixth. She, she needs to split the field and try to save some ground on the rail. I know Rocco sometimes will take the overland, uh, overland route, but it depends how fast they're going up front. But she's shown speed before sprinting. She just needs to stay intact. The number's right, 6-1. to one. Will the string of long shots continue? A 15-1 to one shot in the fourth, 12-1 to one shot in race number five. What does the sixth have in store? About to find out with Matt Dinnerman standing by post-time. Sixth, live from Oakland on Fox Sports 2. Wings from above. Next up. Lady Commander, the princess says, has got it. Two more runners to round out the group. Our bed in the purple. And Lantern's Candy to the outside. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff, uneventful start. Wings from above, shoots out to the front, leads by three parts of a length, singing Emma on the outside right there, applying mild pressure. Wings from above in a good gallop, now leads the way by a length. Singing Emma left back in second. Caricia running in third with Tyrona and a three deep, the princess says down the backside. Another length and a half to the favorite. Teresa's silver lying in midfield just ahead of Vow. Then Shell Shock at Lantern's Candy. Our bet joins that duo and Lady Commander's the trailer as they charge into the turn where Wings from Above leads the way at 3-1 to one and goes well. Wings from Above going strong around the far turn. Opens up a length and a half. Caricia moves up to be level second with Tyrona. The princess says sent along is starting to lose position. Teresa Silver lining down on the inside. She's looking for a spot to go in a little bit of a tight spot. She's going to stay on the rail at the top of the lane. They've all got to get going if they want to catch Wings from Above. Wings from Above kicks away to a two and a half length lead now. Caricia chasing. Teresa's silver lining up the inside, trying to move up to claim second. As they hit the 16th pole, wings from above in front. Teresa's silver lining finds daylight, comes charging, but it's too late. Wings from above, gate to wire. Teresa's silver lining was second. Caricia holds third. Tyrona fourth. A, a rocket leaving the gate. Uh, that's what she does when she's at her best. Wings from above at 3-1 to one and holding off the late charge, Paul, from the favorite. 
there's a silver lining chasing in vain. Hey, you heard Richie right before the race saying, listen, Ramsey Zimmerman knows one way, and it's to go forward. And he put this horse right on the front end, and no one was able to go with this filly early. You can see the two. There's a silver lining for Christian Torres. Again, troubles at the gate. She ran well late in here, but just could not catch the four wings from above. And again, Norm McKnight with mm -hmm. another winner here, a filly here by Uncaptured. Ramsey Zimmerman, wings from above, over. There's a silver lining. Three lifetime wins, all in wire to wire fashion. Results when our coverage continues on Fox Sports 2. And when we come back, as mentioned, that serious Saturday on the road to the Kentucky Derby, 150th Kentucky Derby, tomorrow at the Big A, the Withers, and the next step towards the Wood Memorial and beyond, perhaps. Stay tuned. Back on America's Day of the Races on our FS2 coverage, brought to you in part where you can play it all Naira Bets. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Go to NairaBets.com and get signed up and started. Listen to your heart. Second off the bench, back in the winner's circle for trainer Ray Handel with Katie Davis, our winner's circle lead in. Brought to you by the Lothenbach Stable Dispersal at Fasig, tipped in with 65 entries of breeding stock and yearlings of the Kentucky Winter Mixed Sale, February 5th and 6th on site in Lexington, Kentucky. Got a battle here, but Andy able to seal the deal. Yeah, Katie was staying off the rail, and a friend of mine texted me the same thing. He said, I don't understand why the riders don't stay away from the rail. I don't think there's anything wrong with it today. Katie was taking the safe route there and got a little close there at the end, but you know, you were saying, Carlos, I, it's nice to see the rapport that's developed between Katie Davis and Ray Handel and seeing them have success together. Yeah, they've, they've done a great job together. They've had a good combination. It's good to see old-time breeders like uh, Paula Hauman, Seymour Cohn's daughter, who's still in the business. Reminds me of the 80s and 90s with my father and Mr. Liza and Flying Z Stable. And Seymour Cohn won a lot of races around here. The family has carried on the tradition. So it's good to see the, the old old guard still, you know, running horses in New York. John Hurtler, I feel like, trained John a lot Hurtler of them. did train Cash a tray, Chester maybe? Chester Ross, a lot yeah. of great, great old-time trainers wow. with Seymour Cohn. Ross. I miss John. $0.80 eighty cents for the win. Sorry, I cut you off. No, it's, no, I was just saying I miss John Hurtler. He's a great guy. I hope he's doing well. Nightcap going to close things out in New York with this race. Six furlong sprint, New York Reds, $40,000 maiden claiming race. So all up for sale for that price. And the favor right now, profitability dropping in for a claiming tag for the first time. One that George Weaver will try and win with a horse who 
was only beat a length and a quarter against State Red Maiden Special last time out. Eric Cancel will ride right now. That's the three-year-old to beat. We'll have the post parade. More on this finale from the Big A when we return. The sun shines bright on Caraconte. His first crops of racing age are showing brilliance on the racetrack with a high percentage of stakes winners. His versatility is evidenced by winners on all surfaces across the globe. Spanderella could not have been more impressive. The sun shines bright on this value sire. Here down 25, here down 25, here down, thank you. Right here, 525,000. Caraconte standing at Gainesway. Game winner first got started and ran a very, very impressive maiden race to Del Mar. Came back in the Del Mar Futurity and again won very impressively at seven furlongs. And then just continued that unbelievable two-year-old year, went on to win the American Pharaoh Stakes at Santa Anita and then the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And then was obviously crowned two-year-old champion. Got this precocity to do that, plus the stamina and everything that, that his whole family indicates. They're off in the 2023 First Crop Sires race. Maximum Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire on the backstretch. Metoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one colts on dirt. But it's Metoli with his third TDM Rising Star. Your champion freshman leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. America's day at the races with a 19% increase in New York bred maiden purses in 2026. It pays to have a New York bred. There's never been a better time to have a New York bred foal. So for information on how to qualify your foal, visit naira.com slash nybreds. Sit downstairs to Maggie. Please be joined by a special guest, Naja Thompson, Executive Director of New York Thoroughbred Breeders. And Naja, some exciting news announced at the beginning of this year that, well, it always pays to have New York bred, but this year even more so with that 19% purse increase for New York bred races. That's right, Maggie. Starting in January 1 of 2026, New York breds will be running for equal purse money as open company. 19% purse increases based on the 2023 purse numbers, so great news to be in the program. And w with the New York Breds, uh, they can win against Open Company. Talk a little bit about the evolution of this program and what you have seen in your tenure. As you've seen yourself, what have you gone away? You just a, ah, a great bring it up a good memory. I like it. Winner, and we've had Winstock, who's running in the Southwest tomorrow. He's a New York bred, of course, competing. Our New York breds are running in open company. They're performing well. So what better time it is to get involved in the program and get paid in equal earnings and awards for having a New York bred just as much as any other horse born anywhere else. Absolutely. Well, to switch gears a little bit, as we celebrate uh, Black History Month, African Americans have been so influential on our sport. Is there anybody in particular that has a profound influence on you or you think that has had a, a really great impact on our industry? Definitely. It's a month. To Other than you, I should say. <laughs> it's a great month to honor the recognitions and the achievements of black Americans in our sport. I think for myself, Sonny Taylor, Suntel Taylor, someone we all know. He was an IRA employee and a racing official for more than 50 years. Uh, just a great figure and want to give him a shout out because I know he's probably watching from <laughs> home. Can you do a Sunny impression? Well, yeah, we got the last coming up here at Aqueduct. <laughs> that was spot on. Well done, Naj. Always a pleasure to catch up with you and keep up the great work with New York Thoroughbred Breeders. Thank you, Maggie. Really appreciate it. All right, Naja Thompson. I love to say, if you see him, you'll see him all around the racetrack. Make sure you stop by and say hi, Greg. 
Anyone who knows Najee Thompson yes. loves Najee Thompson. Impossible to say a bad word about that man. He does a great job as well. Yeah, I, Najee came to work at Naira, and, and he had a he was cubicle was right near mine at the time when I worked here. And I think we were friends in about 10 minutes. We became fast friends. A great guy. Doing a great job with the New York Reds. You know, he mentioned Winstock in tomorrow's uh, Southwest. And Salamini has just had a great start so far, standing up in McMahon and Saratoga. And it is a great time for the New York Reds. Big weekend on, on the Derby Trail. We got one here in New York as well. Grade three withers we're going to look ahead to with a couple of big names, including Lightline for Brad Cox. Manny Franco will have the mount. A horse who won impressively first time out at Horseshoe Indy. And now looking for the second win and start number four in the Graded Stakes debut. I thought he went very well in here. I mean, you're going to see him make this long. You see him starting to rally now from right in the back. And it is not easy to make these long, extended four to five wide runs, especially in races that are one on the front end. And the horse who's winning on the front end is going to be one of the choices in that Southwest as well. Maybe even the favorite in the Southwest. He makes that long run, and while he's not able to get close to winning it, I thought it was a very good effort. A lot of people wondered why he was so far back last time, because he had been closer in route races in his prior two starts. I felt like he broke a little slow, and then maybe just got a little intimidated and squeezed out of the spot. He wasn't put in tight, but sometimes horses get a little bit discouraged in there. I think he's going to be very, very much the one to beat in this in the uh, winners. Eight to five morning line favorite. You get a look at the field that's going to line up. And then Carlos Linda Rice with a horse on this triple crown trail in El Grande. Oh, it's a big question mark with this horse distance. Can he get the mile and an eighth? Yeah, the distance is a question, definitely. But Linda, like I said, she's on a roll. She's had a lot of success stretching these horses out. And, you know, noticing Linda in the morning, one thing she does very well is she'll work a horse a half mile or five furlongs, and the gallop out. She always stresses the gallop out, so foundation is never a problem with her. You always notice her horses, they go out around the turns, and you know she's a very dedicated trainer. And uh, yeah, the distance, uh, if she can get a horse to stretch out, it'll be Linda Rice. I just feel like this is the last time we're gonna see, unless he's successful in these route races on the Triple Crown Trail, I question whether or not he really wants to go this far. I'm a big fan of this horse. I make him the early favor for the Mike Lee, which will be <laughs> run the Saturday, Sunday at Saratoga after the Belmont. I think he's gonna be better going You shorter. don't often see successful speed turf sprinters stretching out on the Triple Crown Trail. <laughs> source who broke his maiden on the lead, five furlongs on the turf. Well, you know, there was a very good, he wasn't a turf sprinter, we didn't run them back then, but there once was a horse that's one of the great sprinters of all time that I know Carlos is familiar with, who, despite the fact that he ran the Kentucky Derby, ended up being one of the best sprinters in the world. That was a great, uh, memories of uh, my father, Jose Martin, who uh, was kidding around and saying he was going to make a champion uh, out of the horse when the horse was eased and beaten 60 links in the Kentucky Derby. And I was laughing, saying, what kind of champion is he going to be? He said he's going to be a champion sprinter. And lo and behold, he beat Phone Trick, beat Turkoman, won two grade one four Groovy. goes, and was a great success story. He, he made him a champion, all right. They say he ran one of the great bu fastest buyers of all time, a 130, I believe, when he beat Phone Trick, actually. And I remember he beat the great Turkoman up in Saratoga in the four go. I love Turkoman. I never forgave Groovy for beating him that day. He beat him a fair and square, though. Great Seven race. furlongs, too. 1987 champion sprinter? 1987. Yeah. He was. One defeat course. against the great, very subtle in the Breeders' Cup. Mel Stute uh, was tough to beat when you go to California back in those days. Post parade here for our nightcap coming up solo tonight. Kicks things off. Kendrick Carmouche. I think a big time player from the rail for uh, for for Ross to pause. First time starter for Ray Handel within view with Dylan Davis. Taking a little bit of money as, Dylan, as, as the Davis family and Ray look to sweep the late double. Another first time starter for the Noda Barn financier. No money for a horse who does not have a lot of pedigree. Not as within view either. You pointed out to me earlier, this horse took money in the debut on dirt. Yeah, Mama Teresa, that's a good family. Makes us think of our friend Dominic Lucio. He lost too early. Thought that one was a little sneaky, Mama's dream. Compute it, went by second start coming up, and here is profitability of the favorite. You love profitability here, Greg, and as of the fans here, I'm a little bit skeptical, but I agree with you. He's very least the horse to beat. Eight horse little amped up here, Iremon. I like Iremon in this race. Will benefit from that day brew where he was too close to a rail that was questionable. Manny Penny dropping in for a tag. Uh, I prefer Manny Petty. How about you? <laughs> 25 to 1. I'm not sure what the penny is. I got busted first time starter with a little bit of pedigree. The, the dam produced um, a debut winner on a sloppy racetrack, Miss Stones. This one's getting bet, right? Yeah, this Seven horse is one. taking 20 to 1 morning line. Bustin Stones, Roddy Valente, who had such a great relationship with Mike Leslie. Mike Leslie now, you know, very successful jockey. He's the agent 
for his son, Lane Luzzi. Very interesting horse at 7-1. to one. Yeah. Well, here's a look at Compute It. So first time out, actually ran at this level, was second, beat less than two lengths, took money in that race as well. Positives, Andy, to take away from this race? Um, the positives, there was a first-time star that ran a very credible race in running second. I wonder if there may be some better horses in this race, but got a 58 buyer first time. Time from U.S. had the race not quite as good. I'm not sure it's not a little bit is a race I rate a little more low to that, than that figure, but still ran well enough first time. That's because they're at least a contender. So second time out, three-year-old by Cloud Computing. Who won the Preakness was the breakthrough triple crown win for Chad Brown. Jose Lascano will be aboard so nine to two right now. Let's head downstairs to Maggie. And Greg, a lot of the logic horses look great in here. I have no problems with Solo tonight, number one, number six, Computed, or Profitability in here. They all can win. But let's take a look at some of the lesser known commodities in here, namely the first time starters. Sorry, it's gotten really cold out here. I'm actually finding it difficult to speak at the moment. Um, but within view, a uh, point of entry sun in here, it's actually a little bit more of a turf pedigree. <laughs> actually galloped the dam, trained unsuccessfully by my husband. Last time I came out of the gate, I fell off. <laughs> off of her. Uh, anyway, she he's a little bit smaller and slighter in his frame, much like the dam was. Is fit, was professional. I just wish there was a little bit more development with him, to be honest. Whereas number 11, as you guys correctly pointed out, I got busted, is taking money. And busting stones, they often are precocious, kind of win early types. And this guy looks fit. He's just done everything right. He looks like the first or that is the one that's potentially going to win at first asking as i do want to give number five mama's dream another shot here tried the turf last time doesn't really look like a turf horse i really liked him in his first start i like him here once again i don't know what's going to happen where he could be better but i think he is better than what his form suggested looks fit strong really well turned out here is a little bit sharper than what i've seen from him in his past efforts as he does get lasix today in this three-year-old debut greg all right, Maggie, thank you. Bound to load up for this finale. Where are you guys going to wind up? Carl's went the first of the 11 on the outside. I like the number eight in this race, Iremon, who uh, was really right down the rail last time, which may not have been the best place to be, and I think it's going to run a lot better dropping down on the second start. Yeah, the Doc Sullivan race uh, came back and won the Maselli horse. Could be a key race. And uh, Winner Charlie and Baker. the third horse improved their buyer Both figures substantially. Yeah. And George Weaver's horse, obviously, you know, George has, has had such a great year, kind of a breakout year in many aspects. So those seem to be the horses. You like this first timer, though, right, the 11? I, I'm taking a little bit of a stab here with the 7-1. Uh, to one. These other horses, they, they have, the two horses that we just mentioned, they both have interesting form, and they've, they've seemed like they've had some chances. I like, other than the Charlie Baker horse, when we ran once, I'd like to take a shot with the first. Turn. And they're off. Off a step slow was Manny Penny. I got busted from the outside draw, and I got busted right out to the front and quickly sprints clear, is now up by a length and a half. It's a trio in behind. Mama's Dream is pursuing towards the inside, is now taken second as a neck in front of Computed in the Red Cap, who's in between horses out wider. That's profitability. Just behind them, Solo Tonight is going to track in fifth, moves towards the outside here. Solo Tonight and Kendra Carmouche taking an outside run with less than four furlongs to travel. Drifting out there was Irie Mann, and that's going to drift out Manny Penny, who's going to be very wide around the racetrack, then within view is towards the tail end. The trailer is financier. 23.43 for the opening quarter mile. I Got Busted is in front and doing it nicely enough so far. It's I Got Busted. A little bit awkward there was Mama's Dream. Just had to check. Check back to third and moving forward is profitability to chase this runaway leader still at the top of the stretch. 48.30 for that half mile time. I Got Busted continues to keep going on the front end. It's I Got Busted. Profitability continues to chase. Computed down the center of the racetrack as well with Solo tonight. But I Got Busted is five lengths in front with a 16th to go. It's going to be I Got Busted to win the nightcap. Lane Luzzy wins the finale. I Got Busted wins it over Compute It, then came within view with a late run and solo tonight in one minute, 14 flat. Second debut winner this dam has produced both of them on sloppy surfaces. I Got Busted for Chris Englehart with Lane Luzzy the win. Now we said in the post parade that this horse was clearly getting bet in this race and no surprise when they're live, they're gonna have speed in here and uh, was able to control and win quite easily. A nice call, Carlos.
Thank you, Andy. The, uh, uh, Dr. Belinsky and Roddy Valente have had a lot of success with these homebreds. And uh, Chris Englehart, um, not n name you typically see with these connections. Bruce Levine has been with them for so many years, and Paul Barrow. So Chris Englehart does it also excellent uh, old school trainer. Barn that's having a very, very good meet. Bruce. Chris Engelhardt. Oh, Chris Engelhardt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Of course, he's running very, very well. You don't think of him winning too often with firsters, but he obviously can do it and did it here. 11 6 3 1. I got busted. No doubt about it here. And 7 1 to close things out. Again, Lane Luzzy on board for the Engelhardt barn and a son of Bustin' Stones with a victory as we head back to Oaklawn. Let's go to Lafitte and Paul. Carlos Martin just dishing out $16 horses at Aqueduct, turning up the pressure here. <laughs> Paul, for the seventh race, post parade, $30,000 claimers, older horses. There's Icarus back on dirt for the Arrowgate five-year-old after that spin on synthetic. Yeah, 10 to one down to seven to two, but needs to get back to the races before the claim. Devil Vision by Pollard's Vision, the one-eyed Illinois Derby winner, then Mystery Mo, a second in his last pair. And Mystery Mo with a lot of seconds. 31 starts, 10 seconds with six thirds. Win Cracker at 10 to 1. That graphic is off five minutes to post, nor is it 999 minutes to post. <laughs> five minutes till the seventh race. Oakland there is Nautilus, the Brazilian, now with Steve Asmussen. <laughs> yeah, we've seen a couple of these horses ship in from, this one's a claim, we've seen a couple of horses ship in from a turf way, been okay, huge, big Lee. You know, the seven in here home run trick is the horse that I was looking at that could be the speed of the speed in here and could take this field a long way. A nine-time winner, eight of those at Oakland home run trick, then that's something, the Oklahoma bred. Yeah, Oklahoma bred here for uh, Louis Q, who just got his 4,000th win. Mm -hmm. Long shots towards the outside. Great heart. One winless uh, since last January. That was on grass. I'm surprised from 9, nine to 2 to 19 to 1. This horse doesn't have that bad a race. Big overlay. A comply racing at Thistledown. Idle since October. Yeah, 7 for 31 lifetime. Does have five wins though in the last two years. Canadian Pharaoh first after the claim. Norm McKnight. McKnight looking to go back to back. Seven-year-old Gilding never been on dirt fast or wet. Beer chaser, who chases beer? Two wins last year, both at Thistledown. <laughs> yeah, chasing beer with some water. You know, this horse comes out of a, a loaded race uh, last time out and did make up some ground. I just don't know if you want to take five to two right now all the way, or seven to skew all the way in the 12 slot. Yeah, the, the tricky post far outside and, and down, that's surprising, isn't it? Seven to two from that eight to one morning line with beer chaser? Yeah, a little surprising. You know, this is a horse that did you know, make up a ton of ground. But the horse on your screen, I thought, you know, listen, when you look at Icarus, is there Icarus? Icarus. Icarus. You know, the races that you go back to at Churchill Downs going to Mile 8th and Ellis Park, yeah, they are quick races. But the last two races where this horse has dropped and then went to um, Turfway Park and not run well, I get the drop here. And the numbers, if he can get back to those numbers, are good. But he's also a horse that comes from out of it. Three to one, tepid favorite, Icarus, circling back to Mystery Mo, hanging up there at seven to one. As we mentioned, second in his last pair. This was his most recent, December 9th, right here in the mud. Mystery Mo and Great Heart, Paul, a chasing Hearn in vain. But a solid effort from Mystery Mo. It was a solid effort, and he was wide most of the way, but this is kind of his MO. 10 second place finishes. Mm. He's one for 11 um, in 2023 with six seconds. I mean, Dallas Park, you can name it. Slope races, um, up on the pace. He's kind of a middle of a pack runner. He's sort of maybe like the first flight or right behind that first flight, but he usually checks in second. His, his lone win or his last win was for 20. Wide, wide open seventh race, two minutes out. And Richie, we're looking at a Devil's Vision. A big fan of his sire, of Pollard's Vision, and that, that one eyed wonder Illinois Derby winner about 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I was a big fan as well, Lafitte, and I love cleverly named horses, and he was about as cleverly named as they come, uh, having one eye, Pollard's vision, Red Pollard, obviously. This could be my top choice, guys, Devil's Vision at a huge price. I was going back and forth between him and the three, Mystery Mo, uh, and Mystery Mo is a horse that just seems like he likes to be second more than he likes to win. Five wins as opposed to ten seconds. So I said go with my gut. Uh, Devil's Vision, his most recent 
best effort was on the turf, but he has races on the dirt that are good enough to put him in the frame here. Uh, he's got a good inside draw. I, Mac Robertson is a trainer that wins consistently at a high percentage. He hasn't had a, a good start to the soak on me, but I don't think that'll last. He's just too good a horseman. I'm going to pick Devil's Vision at 19-1. to 1. I liked what I saw in the post parade. Mystery Mo makes a lot of sense. I just wish that he, you know, had racked up more wins than seconds. It's pretty glaring the uh, five horse nautilus making a real nice impression on the racetrack making the first start for, uh, for steve asmussen comes from a good barn in paula lobo but boy this horse is so well turned out if it was a beauty contest he would absolutely get the check mark uh, i think he's very live here and then we've got to talk about the 11 canadian pharaoh making his first start on dirt we've seen norm mcknight do very well here if they're not winning they're running well and horses that are coming off of synthetic and or turf Turf races. And this horse has been training here on the dirt at Oakland Park, and it seems like Norm McKnight came here with horses off the of synthetic that have been performing extremely well. Tough post, doesn't have a tremendous amount of speed, has to work out a trip, but I think he's interesting at a big price. 13 to 1, Canadian Pharaoh McKnight looking for back to back wins on the Friday program here at Oakland. A uh, trip going to be everything, Paul, with yeah. a big field and, and a two turn mile race here. Well, you know, the one thing you do get here at Oakland is the guys do ride. You know, sometimes when you get a horse on a lone lead, it does not happen very often. And if they do, they're going pretty quick up front. And guys like to ride here. Now, when it comes to Canadian Pharaoh, it's, it's a tough read. When a horse has run 29 times and never been on the surface, I know that he's obviously trained over it in his lifetime. Um, I mean, but he's been up in Canada for most of his career. So Mig's right. Norm McKnight's horses have been running well since they've shipped in here. You know, the 12 on the outside still taking money. You know, the four in here for Carl Boberg, who's gotten off to a good meet, is not. And the one is holding strong here for Mark Sims. Uh, beer chaser on the far outside you touched on. We're looking at Canadian Pharaoh. Beer chaser, though, so oh, exiting a sprint in his last two mile races. Albeit at Thistle Down, he had enough speed to make the lead mm -hmm. there. You have to assume on the stretch out, back out to a mile from that post, Bowen, pedal to the metal from the start, correct? He's an honest horse, too. I mean, you look at some of these other horses in here. This horse is 7 for 27 lifetime. He's run a ton of races. And then you look at a horse like the 8 who's 0 for 5. You look at somebody like we were talking about with the 3, Mystery Mo. One win in 6 seconds. So it seems like that, you know, the outside runner likes to close the door more. I know maybe at a lesser circuit in, in, in Ohio, but Kim Poole has shown that when he ships here, his horses do run well. Beer Chaser live on the board, four to one, circling about as we've just about reached post time for this seventh race. Start of the late pick four here at Oak Lawn. Still have the grade three Bayacoa in about an hour. Next step towards the grade one Apple Blossom. The feature on this Friday afternoon on the eve of the Southwest Stakes. Icarus, uh, three to one here. And Ricardo Santana, we were talking about the tough assignment for Rocco Bowen. As Santana, yeah, a nice cozy draw towards the inside. He'll be able to set up shop wherever he wants. Yeah, this is a big old um, gelding by Arrowgate. Now, he does have two wins over this racetrack. And he's a kind of horse that, like I said before, he's going to probably lay close or closer than usual because he does get that draw of the one hole. You see his other horse at times that he's actually drawn the one. He's broken dead last. Hopefully it's just something that he doesn't have to sit in the gate too long. It's been gate trouble in the past, but we'll see what happens there. But if he can get out of the gate and save some ground, He'll be tough in here. I just don't know if you want to take three to one on anybody in here, especially on a horse that was 10 to one on line. And you're kind of guessing whether he can get back in form. Santana, eight time riding champ, Oaklawn. He rode two of Steve Asmussen's three Southwest winners. And they'll team up again tomorrow with Carbone. Not Carboning, Carbone. Carbone. Of which we've called Carbone for ages until we were fed. Information, suggestion. It was pronounced differently. <laughs> and it's a very good Latin dish from what I heard. <laughs> Carbone. I think I'm going to go home and make some Carbone two for tonight. Two. Not Carboni. One of the okay. major contenders of tomorrow's at Southwest. We still have the Bayacoa here and post time. Time for the late pick four live from Oakland. Race seven. Matt Dinnerman standing by. Jockey, make that Harry Hernandez. Remember that. Nautilus, post five. Comply goes in. Huge Bigley, and two more runners to round out the field, Canadian Pharaoh, and then to the outside, Beer Chaser. 
Here's Beer Chaser. This race will start and end right here at the 16th pole, folks. A full field of 12 kicks off the late pick four, and now that's number eight. That's something who is acting up in the gate. Luis Quinones hopped off behind the gate. They're going to back out that something. Our veterinarian going over to take a look, it appears, and they will do just that. The health and wellness of our equine and human athletes, of course, the utmost importance here at Oakland, and our vet going to take a look at that something. Post 8 who reared up in the game. Wide open betting board here, 7 to 2 for number 1 Icarus, the rail, and then Beer Chaser all the way to the outside at 4 to 1. Reloading, that's something. Luis Quinones hopping back aboard. We're ready. And uh, they're off a bad stumble at the break for Comply, who's at the rear after that. Home run trick. Sent along, grabs the lead from Windcracker second. Huge Bigley put into the race early. He's third, approaching the turn. Canadian Pharaoh deep, farther out. Beer Chaser aggressively ridden to get up there to show speed. And in fact, Beer Chaser from the outside post. Quarter horse to get to the front. He's got it under Rocco Bowen. Beer Chaser, the leader now by just a neck. Home run trick pressing him from the inside. A gap of two to Huge Bigley. Windcracker inside of him. Canadian Pharaoh is next. Mystery Mo, he's racing in the sixth position, just ahead of Nautilus the Great Heart. Icarus, he's running in midfield, and he's about eight lengths off the pace, still running a joint eighth. A gap of four to Devil Vision and a huge break to that something and comply at the back together. They're well behind the top pair. Quick pace here, 23 and 1, 47 flat for that half as they hit the half mile pole. These top two, Beer Chaser, home run trick, flexing their muscles on the lead. There's a gap of three. Huge Bigley sent along. Windcracker still racing inside of him. Nautilus trying to claim fifth. Mystery Mo shown more rain to pick it up. Icarus is a lot of ground to make up. Canadian Pharaohs plummeted back. The others are well behind as they come to the top of the stretch. Beer Chaser, home run trick, still right together. Huge Huge Bigley up into third. Windcracker has lost that position while under siege at the top of the lane. This race ends at the 16th pole. Beer Chaser, home run trick. Huge Bigley has gotten the right setup. Here comes Huge Bigley and Rafael Bejarano sweeping to the front. Huge Bigley drawing clear with the right setup today to win it by three. Home run trick out finishes Beer Chaser for second and Mystery Mo checks in fourth. Rafael Bejarano kicked off the Friday activity with a 25 to 1 upset in the first race and scores here with huge bigly at 7 to 1 to start the late big four at Oakland. Prices continue here at Oakland Park mm -hmm. and, and a good ride here by Rafael Bejarano. Rocco Bowen put the pressure on Chris Landeros. I, I got to give Chris credit in here on the seven. He's tried to raid on the inside. He did not want to get into a speed duel. He actually ended up out finishing the outside horse for second, but the six was just waiting in the wings here. And Rafael uh, Barrano produced the son of Mitch, uh, Midshipman at the right time. Now six for 29 lifetime. This is a nice little exacta too. You get seven to one over 13 to one. Closing with a Flurry claimed off Steve Asmussen by Aaron Shorter for the Finnegans, Randy and Darlene. Huge Bigley. That uh, wasn't a fluke. He won with conviction and authority in the seventh race at Oaklawn Greg. A seven to one shots all around. Huge Bigley here. I got busted there. Yeah, this was a first time starter. I'm surprised Carlos actually still with us. I thought you were going to mic drop and just leave us. Nice <laughs> pick here. Yeah, I'm so happy to see Mike uh, Luzzi uh, and his son Lane. He's gotten off to a good start this winter. You know, he's, he's, he's a hard worker, humble kid, and seems like he's putting the time in to be successful. And you brought it up. Yeah, his dad, now his agent, Mike Luzzi, who won so many races on this circuit and had a great career and now getting the opportunity to represent his son. He's doing a terrific job with Lane because Lane's not going to come here with any young business. He rode a bit at Monmouth Park. Didn't have a ton of success. He's been riding a lot of live horses here. And you got to give Mike a lot of credit for that as well. I mean, Lane's obviously doing a good job with them, but you got to get on the horses. And I know that Mike's popular too, but he's doing a good job getting them on live horses. He puts them in the race, that's for sure. $16.20 to close out this Friday card. Pick six hit for $48,338. Pick five comes back just over $1,650. And we are two legs into the cross country. Pick five with the Oaklawn portion 
of the program to come, races 8, 9, and 10, including that grade 3 Bayacoa that looks wide open. I agree, a fun race. The Bayacoa camp, a good race, and looking forward to that race. Um, a lot more competitive than the first one of the preps to pivot. All right, we look forward to that. That's still to come on the program. Carlos, good to have you on again. It was fun. Thank you guys for having me on again. I really appreciate it. Enjoyed my time. Good to see you. Thank you. Always Same good there. to see you. Nice picks, too. Hopefully you made some people some money out there with that uh, nice selection there in the last. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. More to come on the program, including those final three legs of that cross country out at Oaklawn. BC Stables certainly committed to the game with a lot of horses, and they got just steel in the mix as well, hoping to make an impact on the Triple Crown Trail. We'll be back with more after this. Great to have you with us on Fox Sports 2. Live coverage, America's Day at the Races, is always brought to you in part by Hillendale at Alapa. Horses making their way over for the eighth of 10 here at Oaklawn Race 7. When the dust settled, huge bigly and two wins. Rafael Bejarano, yeah, the, the 24 to one shot to kick off the afternoon and huge bigly first half of the claim Aaron Shorter at seven to one and, and just impressive through the stretch. Yeah, give it up to the Washington bread. Coming here in Oak and getting it done. Usually the Washington breads, when they smell rain, they like to run <laughs> because it usually runs up, the, uh, rains up there in Washington. But huge bigly, he really reached out towards the end there. And congratulations to the owners here, Randy Finnegan and Miss Darlene Finnegan, Finnegan as well. Midshipman out of the Flying with Eagles mare. There you go. Gadget queen. And the long shot, you like completing the exacta home run trick, big effort. Yeah, it ran well. Ran very well. Results much more when we come back. We'll have those for you. Look ahead to the eighth and the Bayacoa plus. Huge Saturday on tap at the Big A. Four stakes races tomorrow included the Toboggan, Kinetic, Sky, Pictured, Heavy, eight to five, morning line favorite. The preview is next.
your guide to selecting a stallion for your mare. Step one, make sure he's won a big, famous race. Assistant guy charges away and takes the Dubai World Cup. Step two, he'd better be very good looking. Step three, he must have excited the support of breeders with quality mares. Mystic Guy. He's unmissable. Call Darley. Phasic Tipton, Kentucky Winter Mixed, featuring breeding stock and yearlings from the complete dispersal of Lothenbox stables, including Grade 1 winner Bells the One and Graded Stakes winner She Can't Sing. Plus, mares in fold to these top sires and yearlings by the sport's leading stallions. Basic Tipton, Kentucky Winter Mixed, featuring the dispersal of Lothen Box Stables, February 5th and 6th in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? Oh, gorgeous scene right there. Lower Manhattan, play all the action. Naira Bets, bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Go to NairaBets.com. Play along with us. We're getting set for a big weekend on the road to this year's Kentucky Derby and preceding that Derby prep here in New York on the Saturday card. Great three toboggan for four-year-olds and up, sprinting seven furlongs. Yeah, and I mean, the two favors, Super Chow and Connect Sky, are really the main two to talk about and while I'm trying to beat them. You've got the talent of Kinetic Sky and you've got the speed of Super Chow. Kinetic Sky, this was back on New Year's Eve in the Queens County mile and an eighth, took the lead in the stretch and just missed a groupie. Very, very tough loss here. And groupie came back and had a nice performance, uh, finishing third in the, uh, the big race at Gulfstream last weekend. I, I don't have a problem with him. I have a question though. One of the things, and I don't have an answer to this. Rick Dutra ran him three days apart. This was the second race in just three days. We're in the 28th and the 31st. Now he comes back almost five weeks, a day short of five weeks later. Do you ever worry that those horses that come back on super short rest, there might be some deleterious effects going forward? It's just yeah, something I thought about, to think a about bit. Yeah. I don't have an answer. Well, Kinetic Sky, eight to five favorite. Jose Lascano will have the return mount. Super Chow, it's gonna be Matty Over. This is a six time winner for Jorge Delgado, just missed by a neck at Gulfstream. Last time out. I don't like this horse lost at one to two last time, but he's the controlling speed in this race. There's no, he was fifth early in this race. Um, Matty Oliver has one job, go to the front and just hope that you can get there. And he's run well at seven furlongs. You know, he ran well um, in the carry back down at Gulfstream last year and the races used to be part of that great summit of speed at Calder. And I thought he ran well in the swale when he finished second last year. So he's shown he can do well, and lone speed can be more dangerous going seven furlongs than six because yeah. often the paces aren't as fast. So I do think Super Chow is dangerous. I'm kind of hoping, though, that Murray is improving for Brittany Russell shipping in from uh, from Maryland. Yeah, winner two back at six furlongs, tried a mile. Maybe was just a little, a, a, yeah, a little too long. Now cuts back to seven. Tries that distance for just the second time. That'll be the eighth on the card tomorrow. 324 Eastern start time for that grade three toboggan. As mentioned, though, big weekend on the road to the Triple Crown out in Hot Springs. It's the grade three Southwest, and this one of 12 that will line up. Linebacker, huge long shot for the barn of Jordan Blair. Blinkers will go on. Still a maiden tackling great at stakes company. We'll be back.
Live, look at the finish line here at Oakland Park in Hot Springs. Welcome back. You're watching America's Day at the Races is always brought to you in part by America's Best Racing for the love of the race. Visit America's Best Racing dot net today. Ponies awaiting the three year old fillies for the upcoming eighth race. So we have a moment to look ahead to tomorrow's Southwest Stakes, the ABR America's Best Racing's race of the week. The next step towards the Arkansas Derby, three-year-olds, $800,000 purse, 20 Derby points to the winner. Deep, competitive, including a pair of maidens. Look at number nine, linebacker, 30 to one. Looking to graduate, Paulie earned his first career win in an $800,000 event. Well, he's progressed in his races, right? He, he ran at six and a half furlongs first time out. He was behind Mystic Dan, who will be right to his outside. He ran third. Then Jordan Blair ran him seven furlongs. He ran a good third behind Legal Eyes, who's come back to win. And then first time around two turns, you would think, okay, a closing sprinter, not going to happen. He kind of did the same thing. He grinded away in a nice little second base finish as your favorite at six to five. So he needs to cross a couple borders, but just a couple extra steps might put him maybe in the conversation late. The maiden in the Southwest, one of two. I guess the, the question for trainer Jordan Blair is, why? We run in the Southwest, we'll definitely be taking a shot because he's still a maiden. But in his three maiden races, he's run against some very, very good horses. Had one really troubled trip, one really troubled break. We're gonna add blinkers this time. So if we can get away well, and get the trip, I'm confident he can be right there with these horses. Those are horses that he's run against before and run well against. Linebacker on the outside coming with his best run late. The change in time has given us the ability to, to get another breeze in. I got a breeze in right before the freeze. These horses change so much in their three-year-old year from month to month, week to week, day to day. So um, getting a, I guess, a quote unquote later start it's gonna be to each individual horse. So we think he's got the talent, I think he can get the distance, and um, we're gonna go for it. Taking a shot, he's gonna go for it. Um, he's never won a race, but as he mentioned, some solid races on paper from linebacker. How much would he have to improve to contend with the, with the very best? I don't think an awful ton. I mean, if he's able to move forward just a little bit, a lot of people forget that good magic turned out to be a good sire, won the Breeders' Cup <laughs> as a maiden. So horses will win races and significant races as a maiden. I don't think he's that far off. And as Jordan's saying, he knows his horse is a very, very good trainer, very, very good young trainer. So if he's saying this horse is going to like the distance, he might improve even more. And the assignment just got easier. Uh, the morning line favorite, Maycox Bay, we have just been told, it is out. Yeah. The 3-1 to one morning line favorite Maycox Bay is out which which impacts the race on, on several fronts it has a lot of speed perhaps a softer pace but the point is we'll have more on this later on in the broadcast Maycox Bay is out we do have to say goodbye to our Valley SoCal viewers much more from Oakland on Fox Sports 2. Down to the wire they're stopping War Bomber, War Bomber's won the King Edward. Shield Cave has won the Twilight Derby. War Front, standing at Claiborne Farm. Experience the adrenaline pumping, suspense filled action of the Sport of Kings no matter where you are with Naira Vets. It's fast, easy, and secure. Download the app today and start winning with our lucrative weekly promotions, thrilling handicapping contests, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Don't just watch horse racing, be a part of the action with Naira Vets. Number one is Mo Donegal by Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come out for the finish, and it's gonna be tight here in the Remsen, Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donegal and early voting, and it is Mo Donegal to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track. On, every on every screen, every day. Every day. 
With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Back in America's Day at the races on our FS2 coverage. Final three races of this cross-country pick five. The Oaklawn Park portion of the sequence all coming up includes a great three by a co in that distaff division. Yeah, and the Bayako is really looking like a good one. We were talking about that. It goes to Bayako, the Azari, and then to the big one, the Apple Blossom, the grade one Apple Blossom. Yeah, one of the most prestigious races there is in that division all year long. Eighth at Oakland, six for a long sprint in this allowance optional claiming field. In the seven to five favorite, the six here, Phil Bauer, Rigney Racing, and a Philly by Arrogate, won her debut, and then was a distant fourth in the untappable at Fairgrounds. I thought she was very, very interesting cutting back. I just didn't think I was gonna be getting this short of price. She didn't look like a seven to five shot on paper. Seven minutes of post coming up here in the eighth. Let's go back to Lafitte and Pauly. Three-year-old Phillies. Tomorrow, the Martha Washington. Next step towards the fantasy. Oakland's most for sophomore Phillies. These running for a hundred and forty thousand dollar purse. We start with hitting my stride second in her last pair. Yeah, she's the lone filly in here that's actually up for the tag of a hundred thousand dollars in this field. Besides the ten in here, and there's two horses that are up for the tag. Ricardo Santana riding a twenty to one shot and cheeky gal. Cheeky gal, Ricardo, like you said for. Peter Miller will get Lasix like a lot of these horses for the first time. Our keepsake, Wayne Lucas, trying for a second Southwest Stakes tomorrow. I thought this horse had a little bit of a look at 21 to 1. De Bois Blanc, 7 to 2 contender. Speed for Brad Cox, and the horse it is 2 for 6 lifetime. The numbers are light. You get Manny Franco aboard. Curlin's Magic, fourth in the Zia Princess. Blinkers go on for Diodoro and Christian Torres. They a are very good together, 25%. Legadima, the gray, just like Daddy Arrowgate, her three-year-old debut. Yes, and she's the one, to, or he, she's the one to beat by far, and she is heavily bet in the pick threes. Seven to five, then the nine, an extreme diva, at 18 to one outsider, the 10 ready for trouble, pictured with Chris Linderos. I thought the three and the 10 were the two long shots that maybe can close up into this race and make your trifecta, your superfecta a little spicy. You liked a long shot that ran well in the seventh, Asternia pictured. Yeah, Asternia gets the blinkers on, Lasix, cutting back a little bit in distance. I thought a dangerous horse is Randy Morse is having a great meet. Copperham, about Rosario and Asmussen. Yeah, they won. Nine to one. Yeah, they won a race earlier. Here's the horse that won first time out, 81 buyer, then won at Kentucky Downs. Tried long last time. I thought the 12 was very deep. I'm surprised the 12 is is nine to one. You have a horse in here that's at six to five. But like I said, the six is playing like almost an even money to four to five shot in the will pays in the pick threes. Legadima. And this is part of the reason why we revisit her debut late November, Churchill Downs, flashing that speed, impressive in her first career start, Legadima. Yeah, she was really good this day. You know, Phil Bowers' horses were just on fire at this time at Churchill Downs. Now he's taking this filly, obviously, to fairgrounds, and they were a little ambitious going into the untappable because you're trying something new for the first time, going long, and it did not pay out. They're hoping they get back to this effort right here, going back to six furlongs. She'll get Lasix and a Philly by Arrowgate that's shown precocity, which, you know, the Arrowgate runners, you know, rest in peace, you know, have gotten better as they've gotten a little mm -hmm. bit older. Um, so that's kind of scary the way she ran first time out. I'm not saying I, I like the three in here. That's who I picked actually at, at 22 to one. The six is going to be really tough in here. Uh, what a loss, Arrowgate. Uh, what a horse superstar and. What a stallion, the sire of the favorite, Richie Legadima, who we're looking at, and we just watched her, her maiden win. You talk about you know, running through the wire in her lone sprint, back sprinting today, like just a powerhouse performance in her debut at Churchill. It really was, and I think you said the right thing, Lafitte. The way she finished, her legs up underneath her, her stride never deteriorated, and you could see why that would encourage them to stretch her out immediately particularly being by Arrowgate and the way she finished with her stride all intact. Um, 
I, I think obviously she's going to be very tough to beat. She's a very short price favorite on the board. They're getting back to probably what she wants to do more. And look at her work tab. I mean, it's just steady, consistent. She kind of seems to flash brilliance uh, in her morning trials. She's going to be very tough to beat. Um, interesting, Robertino Diodoro has two in here. The one hitting my stride. You get Harry Hernandez, a rider that, again, we talked about earlier, I've been impressed with. Um, their intention is to really go with that filly. They want her to show the most speed and kind of send her along. Um, the four horse with uh, Manny Franco, Du Bois Blanc, if I'm saying that properly, um, that's part of the pace here as well. And Brad Cox is here today. Um, he's got a filly in the next race, comply uh, coming off a win in the ladies handicap. And I think these two might get engaged. Interestingly enough, the five horse, Curlin's Magic, who will be my top selection, um, Adds blinkers, but Robertina Diodoro said he just hopes it doesn't make her too racy. He wants his other filly to show more speed. He just thought she loses a bit of focus, and he just wants him to kind of get her attention more, not make her speedier. And she's go going to be my top selection. I think she's going to sit a real nice trip and kind of see how things develop right in front of her. Um, she's by Good Magic, son of Curlin. Curlin proven to be a sire of sires, and Good Magic certainly really got off to a terrific start as a young stallion and Curlin's Magic, I think, is too big a price. I'm, I'm curious to get Paul's perspective in, on this at 7-1. to one. I thought she'd be half that price. Give her a shot. Curlin's Magic, Polly. Well, you have to. I mean, you know, she was 40 cents and a dollar I get it at Remington Park, but she won really nicely. You know, he, Robertino took a string of horses over to Zia for that stakes day, um, Mexico bred. It wasn't New Mexico bred, but it was a stakes day at Zia. And, you know, a couple of his horses didn't run that well. This is a horse that comes from a little bit off the pace, got hung out wide that day. You can see Christian Torres traveled with this horse. And, I mean, the horse looks a pitcher of health. The blinkers go back on. I think the key to Lasix. I mean, this horse did have Lasix first time out. I think it's going to be a key for a lot of these horses. A factor that we have to remember in a, in a, a narrative Paul, that, that I know you really focus on, specifically when it comes to these Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks qualifying races where the points are available in these three-year-olds in the Southwest and, and horses that have perhaps raced and run well with Lasix in the past that won't be allowed to do so in these races because it is a derby prep. Yeah, you, you never know if it's going to make a difference or not. Some horses run better off the Lasix, some do with it. It's just... It's an experiment. Sometimes it will boost the horse. Sometimes it will not. It's just easy to forget, 100%. and you have to you have yeah. to constantly keep that in mind. I'm with you. It's 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 a lot with weights too. Like, you know, I think a lot of people forget about weights anymore. It used to be a lot big handicapping tool where a horse is carrying less weight than another horse, but not so much anymore. That's the Southwest tomorrow. Also, the Martha Washington three-year-old Phillies four stakes races. We still have the Friday feature on the eve of the Southwest, the Bayacoa race number nine. But first things first, this really good allowance sprint. Sophomore Phillies and an exciting Philly who is getting crushed currently eight to five. Legadima loading into the gate. Julian Le Peru to ride. Matt Dinnerman standing by. Post time, race eight, live from Oakland. Ready for trouble has got into the gate. Our keepsake, Dubois Blog, with the New York based rider Manny Franco. Astertia, two back, Curlin's Magic, and Copperhead to round out the field. And uh, we're off. The 10 runners broke in a single file lie. Dubois Blog put into play early as a narrow lane. Extreme Divas right there. Asternia makes it three across the track down the back stretch. They open up two on Copper M, who runs in the fourth position with Cheeky Gal. Hit my stride and Legadima. They're side by side. Those two running seven lengths off dueling leaders. Lebois Block and Asternia. Asternia clears off now as Lebois Block is left behind in second approach in the turn. We come back to Curlin's Magic. Had to check at the five eighths pole. Got shuffled back to the second last spot. She now moves past her stable mate hitting my stride and the trailer well out of it is ready for trouble as they round that far turn Asternia strings them out went quickly 21 and 3 that first quarter moving right along as she hits the quarter pull extreme diva picks up the running in the second spot Dubois Blanc is third under a hard ride Copper M next with our keepsake the others are well behind as they come down the lane extreme diva on the outside trying to reel in Asternia who has a final furlong to go extreme diva and Eduardo Gallardo on the outside 
outside inside Asternia and Manny Escavel. Extreme Diva gradually getting to that early leader, Asternia, and Extreme Diva's going to pull it off at 11 to 1. Extreme Diva did it over Asternia. Coming on late, Lagadima for third, and fourth was ready for trouble in that photo uh, with, I believe, that was Cop Rem and also our keepsake. Been that kind of afternoon, hasn't it? And perhaps a trend for the weekend. Extreme Diva at 11 to 1. Another upset at Oaklawn. Well, they went really fast early in here, like Matt Ditterman called. And you could see the 9 and the 11, two long shots going down in the wire. The 11 horse was getting blinkers and Lasix. The 9 was getting Lasix for the first time. But McLean Robertson and Eduardo Gallardo will get the job done. Watch the six come flying up the rail. Just did not get off to a great beginning. There's the 10, the, one of the long shots I thought could maybe make up some ground late. But the favorite didn't get off to a great beginning and was got put beyond the eight ball. But they went so fast early. It looked like nobody was making up ground. It's a fast time, too. One ten and change. Excited to see what Legadima would do in her first sprint since that debut win. Like you said, just a non-factor here in the end, opening up the door for another, an extreme diva. It's like, yeah, okay, so you won two races by like 20 lengths at Canterbury. Let, let's see what you can do at this level. Keeneland, right. Oakland, just a struggle in her first two. <laughs> no such struggle this afternoon. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it was 80 cents a dollar, 40 cents on a dollar, and, and just blew up two Minnesota bred races. And this Minnesota bred and McLean Robertson with his first win. This will be a nice win. He's a heck of a conditioner. But this Philly by Cole Front, she got to him today at 11 to 1. And Asternia was very good for Randy Morris. Blinkers on, did work, and it's a nice exact if you have it. Another um, price? Lots of firsts. Yeah, Eduardo Gallardo, uh, Extreme Diva for Extreme Racing LLC at uh, 11 to 1. Uh, the four stakes races tomorrow afternoon for our viewers perhaps just joining us in case you missed it. Uh, Maycox Bay, the 3 to 1 morning line favorite for tomorrow's Southwest Stakes is out. And it's not just the absence of the favorite, it's the impact on the race shape and the speed that he brings to the party. Uh, so, yeah, the favorite out of tomorrow's Southwest Stakes. Much more on the Southwest included. Uh, the story of the BC Stables, relatively new to the sport and their opportunity tomorrow. Uh, owner of Just Steel, trained by D. Wayne Lucas. Lucas looking for a second win in tomorrow's Southwest. He's kind of blue collar. He, he grinds and grinds away, just keeps coming. Just Steel, 8 to 1 on the morning line for tomorrow's $800,000 Southwest.
Entering the winner's circle, Extreme Diva, Extreme Racing, Mac Robertson, the first win. Other meet, Oakland, same with Eduardo Gallardo, 11 to 1 in the second leg of the late pick four at Oakland. Yeah, congratulations to Eduardo Gallardo. He had a awful spill where actually two guys were involved, like Chris Landeros and a couple horses, and horses and riders were both okay. But Eduardo had a horse fall on his leg. He actually broke his leg, so he had to sit out for about, almost about four weeks or so, and he's just been getting back. He's a good rider, and I'm happy that he got this win, a much-needed win for him for somebody that's coming off an injury. 2580, Extreme Diva. Again, to that Canterbury, the two wins there, now proving she can she can compete and win at this level over Asturnia. You liked an outsider ready for trouble, a little cross the board action, just missed. Yeah, it came flying late, but you know, the six was probably best in here, but you know, the horse kind of lost a bit more. I, I looked at it, the horse did break okay, and the six was getting encouraged most of the way around by Julian Le Peru. It just, it seemed like she decided to run at the end of the race. Ninth race in the books, Extreme Diva. And the winner's share of that $140,000 purse. Here's what we've seen thus far in the cross country pick five with Listen to Your Heart. Uh, I got busted at seven to one in Extreme Diva moments ago, 2582 legs remain, included the grade three Bayakoa in honor of the 1989 1990 Breeders' Cup Distaff champion, a South American import. Ron McAnally did wonders with her legacy. Remembered, honored, and Apple Blossom winner here at Oak Lawn Park. Those are the morning line odds. We're shotgun hottie, two to one on the morning line. And that's kind of a theme here, Paul, where you have graded stakes winners yeah. uh, kicking off their, their 2024 campaign. Um, th th you have to worry a about rust to a certain extent. Yeah, so you're looking at the two mares in here, and you have the seven and nine, hot and sultry, and you have shotgun hottie. They're probably the most established in here probably by far, but then there are the two horses that are coming off the layoff, and you have horses like Ice Orchid, Butterbean, that have raced here already at this meet and have recency. So what's gonna give here, is it gonna be class or recency? And you have a horse like Just Catherine who's coming in from Aqueduct as well. So you have horses coming in for a little bit from everywhere, which makes it a little bit interesting, but Hot and Sultry and Shotgun Hottie are the two horses to beat if they run their races. Early on, the wagering public not concerned about the distance here for Hot and Sultry. She's done her best work middle distances around one turn. In the early stages of the wagering, she is an odds-on choice in four to five. I think the other part of that, too, is what we just saw in the last race. The horse went 21 and change, and the two horses kind of just like went around the racetrack. I think the racetrack's playing a little bit towards speed, or you want to be forward, and I think Hot and Sultry is going to try to lead them all the way around. Hot and sultry, four to five favorite for the Bayacoa today. That was scheduled for tomorrow, but now on the eve of this Southwest program with four stakes races tomorrow afternoon, highlighted by the next step towards the Arkansas Derby. And the Southwest stakes, there's the field. Uh, again, the morning line favorite is out. Number one, Maycox Bay is out. 10 minutes ago, an affection from tomorrow's Southwest stakes. Uh, take a look at number 11, Just Steel, eight to one on the morning line and just steals owners john bellinger and brian quello of bc stables they're, they're relatively new to the sport they didn't buy, uh, buy their first horses until the 2021 september yearling sale uh, but it was john's relationship with a hall of fame trainer that gave him the confidence to jump right into thoroughbred racing i've always wanted to get into uh, horse racing but the horses i wanted i couldn't afford you know i got to know wayne through dr charlie graham <laughs> We went to the Derby together, fell in love with uh, the Derby and horse racing. He had a great time and he said, you know, at some point when we're ready or feel like it, we'll get together and we'll get some racehorses. And then they called me, his partner, Brian Quaylor and him had, uh, I think he just done a, a huge business deal in the cattle industry. And uh, they said, we're ready to get in the race horses. And boy, were they ever. We both have this, hey, we're going to do this. Let's do it right. We took on a lot in the three-year time span. We were going to buy one horse, and today, I don't know, we have 26. Bellinger and Quello surprised me. They, they made a, a much more solid investment. They jumped in and got six or seven, and then came right back and bought 12 more. If you really take the right steps, and whether it's buying the right horses, the training the yearlings with the right people, having someone like Wayne take us to the next step. We trust Wayne, and uh, our goal is uh, to have a uh, triple crown winner. 
I wouldn't say they're in a hurry, but I feel the pressure of trying to make that work because they have made a great commitment. They've got a couple of three-year-olds that are getting us excited, and uh, Jeff Steele is one of them. He is really a gorgeous horse. He's and from top to bottom. Whether he is good enough to be in the Derby or any Derby, it doesn't matter. If you look at him, you're going to love him. What I like about this, this colt is, is, is he's a massive horse. Wayne's trying to get him to peek out. And being a big horse, he's got room to peek and to grow into himself. I had a feeling that Justify would really come abroad and be a top sire. I liked him as a racehorse. I talked to Bob Baffert about him a lot. Then I bought four more Justifies. We're hanging our hat on Justify. I think that he could be a good one. We want to get in the dance. You know, even if we are not fortunate to win it this weekend, if we can be in the top three in each of these three races, he's still going to be a great contender for the Derby. The excitement for new owners in the sport and waking up tomorrow morning knowing that they have a horse who could get relatively close to qualifying for the Kentucky Derby trained by D. Wayne Lucas. I don't know how much sleep they're going to get the night before the Southwest. And let's be honest, this horse has got a ton of talent. I mean, I think his coming out party was in Ed Brown two starts ago where he just kind of focused. You know, when you look at his PPs, he's the kind of horse that kind of throws in a clunker. And then he went up and he threw an 88 buyer when he broke his maiden at Saratoga. But his last two races, he's finally put two races back to back. I think he's starting to figure it out. And like they were saying before, he's a big gangly colt, so maybe he's coming into himself at the right time. I really liked his effort in the Smarty Jones yeah. on New Year's Day. And, and he has a quality. He, he's not brilliant. I don't want to say in like blue collar because he's, he's too good. He's competing yeah. against some of the best three-year-olds, certainly um, here at Oakland and running in tomorrow's Southwest. But the quality that I like is he's just relentless. He just keeps coming and coming and coming. He's got a big shot tomorrow. I really do. I think he's one of the ones. He, you know, he does draw the 11 hole, but he possesses speed um, with Ramon Vasquez, who is a forward rider. I just think that this horse is peaking at the right time. I know that he got beat by Catching Freedom last time, but Catching Freedom was coming in from fairgrounds, and this is a horse that I thought passed the test a little bit. Now, I know the number went down going around two turns, but that was the first time that this horse had tried it since not running well doing it, and I think last time proved, okay, maybe this horse's mind has changed a little bit. I think he's got a big shot. Lucas, perhaps due. 1992, his loan at Southwest Victory, he's still still going after that fifth Kentucky Derby, and we'll see what Just Steele does tomorrow afternoon in at the Southwest Stakes. Next step towards the Arkansas Derby. But today is all about older Phillies and Mares and the upcoming grade three by Akoa. And there is the current favorite. Odds on four to five hot and sultry. Riders up post parade next. The featured event on this eve of the Southwest, the by Akoa in about 11 minutes. War Dancer, New York's leading turf sire again in 2023 with standouts like Barrage at Saratoga. Here's Barrage with a final surge. Barrage got him. War Saichi dominant on the dirt at Finger Lakes. War Saichi has scampered well clear. War Saichi all the way with the top spot. And Danzig Queen on the tap of the surface at Woodbine. And Danzig Queen will come away and win by a length. Consistently producing winners on dirt, turf, and synthetic. War Dancer, proud to stand in New York.
who comes for home now, entering the final furlong, and gorgeous with a bold late run toward the rail. Bayakoa is put to a fierce drive, trying to hold on by two. Gorgeous trying to catch her, running up ground. Bayakoa is got it. Bayakoa wins. Just hours before Sunday, silence defeated Easy Goer in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It was Bayakoa with that Michael Jordan tongue wag. The first of two victories in the Breeders' Cup distaff with some guy named Pinkai in the in the saddle, Polly. And Dad is, I've asked him often about, you know, the best he's ever ridden, the fastest, the best older horse, the best three-year-old. He'll, he'll tell you, Bayakoa, the, the greatest race mare he ever, he ever rode. She was something special. Um... It's pretty cool. It's got to be pretty cool to watch your father run these races and remember where you were at pretty the time. Cool. Yeah. Uh, military school, Army Navy Academy. Go Warriors. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And she did have the Jordan uh, uh, hey, tongue yeah. wag going. But look at that record. What's Chris McCarron doing in the picture? Oh, wow. You know How who she that? did most of her damage with? My Both goodness. Breeders' Cup wins. Chris, Chris, if you're watching, I'm... This, this upsets me. Well, this is the first, a lot of people, York, a lot of people forget, a lot, you know, this was probably the start or the beginning of Ron McAnally going over to Argentina. And then uh, what happened after that? Another horse named Candy Ride. And he, uh, with the South American imports, yes. uh, Ibero, who, who won a, a Cigar Mile before it was known yep. as the Cigar Mile, I, I, I believe. And I think Chris might have rode her a couple of times. One was when, when Dad broke his collarbone in the Harness Charity event at Los Alamitos. Um, but for Bayakoa, all the credit in the world to Ron McAnally. When she arrived, she was this temperamental, nervous filly who would just pull and pull at her riders. And he took all the time in the world to get her to settle it, her down, as he described, and letting her know everything was okay, and, and transformed her into this front-running wrecking ball, two-time Breeders' Cup distaff winner and two-time champion, Greg and Andy. I don't know if there's any, like, Bayakoas in today's by a COA, but a real good group of fillies and mares. We have an odds on favorite and a hot and sultry, but surprising shotgun hottie hanging up there at five to one, the two to one morning line favorite. You know, Liffy, can you just leave your personal baggage at home? Seriously, it's a little disappointing. <laughs> uh, by a COA, I was telling Greg, and, and you guys will appreciate this. That was me in the pick threes, and, and I was alive in the pick three with gorgeous and open mind and for some reason didn't use Bayakoa. She was a, a fabulous, fabulous racehorse. And, of course, she's linked with Gopher Juan and the tragedy that day in the Breeders' Cup, but she was a, an incredible racehorse. And she and Gorgeous, and I'm sure Lafitte will remember this, had a great rivalry back in California where they ran together in the winter as well, a horse who, who, who was very, very good trained by Neil Drysdale. But Bayakoa was an all-timer. Back-to-back champion. Horse. 13-time grade one winner, just an absolute star. And you know, let's be a Chris McCarron rode her to perfection a couple of times he was on. Yeah, I mean, he was clearly, it was, she won in spite <laughs> of the rider that she had when Chris wasn't riding her. And I agree, by the way, with what Lafitte was saying about Shotgun Hottie. Um, I am shocked. I mean, is she dead on the board? How is she the same price as comparative? I mean, salt, Hot and Sultry is very dangerous in the horse to be the speed. Shotgun Hottie... I mean, we haven't seen her in a while. I think that's a concern, what happened to her. Hunt Soldier's going to try to wire the field. Um, but how quick do you think this pace is going to be, Greg? I think that's really a question. Um, and as I try to find she my She wants to do it on the front end. She's shown sprint speed in the past. This performance was just next level, though, for her. Can she be this kind of mare going forward? This was at a mile in a grade three. Now it's going to try and do it at a mile and a 16th, but this was sensational. And to be fair, she didn't run badly in the Apple Blossom last year. Um, you know, second, be third behind Clarier and Secret Oath. Those are serious racehorses. Now, when she ran the Azari, she wasn't as effective. You have to sort of hope that she's gone forward from them, but we haven't seen her since November. But at least she's sort of running in the right races, where is Shotgun Hottie? What happened to her after the Molly Pitcher? Because after that win, she could have been a contender in Laces the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, that was July 22nd. Have not seen her since. And you saw that graphic there real quick, the Pippin. Top three finishers out of that race coming back today, including Misty Vale. But Shotgun Hottie, as you bring up, Last time she was seen for Cherie DeVoe, just a monster performance in moment. And beating Search Results, who was a heavy, heavy favorite that day. And even La, 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 La De Vida, who was second or second there, she didn't embarrass herself in the Breeders' Cup at a very big price in the distaff. These are serious horses. Now, maybe she'll be a horse that needs a race for Cherie DeVoe, but I, I, I agree with what Lafitte was asking me. I'm shocked to see her at this price. And you can say she's dead on the board at this price. 
and she's got to come down, she's a bet at 5-1 to one or anywhere close. In my she's opinion. one off the bench before. Can she do it against a very tough group? Let's send it back to the boys in Hot Springs. Yeah, Greg, really good off the bench and really has improved for Jury DeVoe. Shotgun Hottie all set for her five-year-old debut, five to one. Post parade, grade three by a co. We start with the alleys. Look, third in last year's Kentucky Oaks. And this one for Brendan Walsh. Brendan hasn't shipped one here to Oakland yet. You get Raphael Bejarano aboard. He's looking for a double on the day. She's a quality, she's a quality filly. Bejarano, yeah, looking for a third on the afternoon. Ice Orchid, second in the Pippin, not the best of trips. Yeah, she's been wide in her last two trips. The issue with her, she likes to run second a lot, but she's always right there in the mix. 14 to one shot side by side. Misty Vale, the Pippin winner. Yeah, Ramon Vasquez made a great move where he just ran this horse up the rail last time out in the Pippin. She had a good trip where she didn't have a good trip in her last, the one back. New York bred just Catherine. Yeah, just Catherine for Jose Jimenez coming off a, a five and a half length win. Butterbean, closer, upset mistletoe winner. You know, this mare's in really good form, and she closed into a slower type of place, uh, pace last time. Comparative pictured here. It could be a big weekend for, well, no, Godolphin. Yeah, the scratch of May Cox Bay kind of changes that. Yeah, this horse four for ten lifetime, this filly. Then hot and sultry, even money for Norm Cassie. Yeah, there you can see like, she looks long, and she looks like she wants to go two turns. I don't know about even money, though. Scratch Cat, Rigney Racing, Phil Bauer, 16 to 1. You know, at this one time, this horse... Would have been one of the favorites in here. I don't know if she's going backwards or not. Shotgun hottie, five to one, leading rider Christian Torres. Yeah, listen, she's one for one over this racetrack. I would think she'll stay close. Christian's smart enough to stay close, at least somewhat close to hot and sultry, or someone's got to go with the seven. Larceny at nine to two. Six minutes out to this grade three. By a call, we check in with Richie. Yeah, thanks, Sophia. I'm so pleased to be joined by Alex and Joanne Lebo. And uh, Miss Lebo, Hot and Sultry has really kind of upped her game. Her last race, probably her best effort. She has not won around two turns yet. Is there any concern about that? Yes. <laughs> yes, there's always a concern. You know, I think she'll go ahead and get it, but it, it's getting to her outer range. Do you think her best go, though, maybe try to go gate to wire? Might as well, yeah. It's, she's got quick, quick speed. And if somebody wants to try to go with her, it's probably not going to do them any good or us. Joanne, you and, and Mr. Levon have been together for 55 years, high school sweethearts. How special is it for you to have this shared passion? We both grew up with horses, so fortunately we still like the horses, and I love it. He's a good guy. <laughs> well, he actually thanks me for buying horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're both. He's a good guy, and he knows his horses. You're both native from Arkansas. How, how special is it to compete here at Oakland Park? Oh, it's, it's, it's the best. And the Sellers, I mean, what a job they've done over the years keeping, keeping this going and getting it better and better. But to win at home, if the pressure's tougher, and I've never, I think we won a grade two here, but all the grade ones have come in New York. Had never done it here. So we have a handicap here, I think. Well, uh, also, though, if you run well here, obviously the major goal would be the Apple Blossom. A good third last year against two top-class race mares. Top, top horses, and that's, I was, they were great horses, and I was glad to see them go. You seem a little nervous. Are you nervous? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> I am. I don't watch the race. I pace back and forth. Somebody has to And I, I do like this. <laughs> Well, best of luck, and thank you so much for taking the time. And, guys, not only is Mr. Leblong uh, a dedicated racehorse owner here uh, at Oakland, he is the, uh, the chairman of the State Gaming Commission, uh, the Horse Racing Commission here, and this game needs strong stewardship like we get from Mr. Leblong. So involved, uh, a credit to the sport. Joan Leblong, who doesn't watch the race and really appreciate. Sounds like my, sounds like my mother. She never used to watch my at-bats. So <laughs> you, you got Alex out there looking at the tote board, and Joanne does not want to look at anything. Is that true? She wouldn't watch your at-bats? No. You know, what's funny is, is there was a couple occasions. I remember when I came up in game seven um, with two outs against Wainwright. I looked up in the crowd, and my father was, it was like almost like a light. My father was standing up. And then I looked at the rest of my family, and they were all hiding behind posts. That's yeah. my, my grandmother. <laughs> she could not watch Dad ride. She could, could yes, not watch Some people watch just, him you know, when sometimes, ride. and it's almost like, listen, I've said this a million times. 
you know, I could hit Randy Johnson or not, you know, not be as nervous because it's in your control. When you own a racehorse, it's the most exciting thing in the world because it's out of your control. Your nerves kick in. I used to be a nervous wreck. I used to sweat bullets for a $35,000 claimer when I owned a horse, and I'd be fine if I was facing Kurt Schilling that mm-hmm. night. It's crazy. I can hear Andy Serling now. I couldn't watch your dad ride either. <laughs> right? Hot and sultry. Hey guys, you have to appreciate the candor from Alex when asked about the distance. Are you concerned about the two turns? Yeah, I am. Well, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Leblongs. They've been big players in the game. I love the big beast stores they had. Um, and I'm curious of Paulie's opinion. I have so much respect for Paulie's opinion. He's been so good down at Oakland this year. I, I'm not a big fan of comparative. And I think there's a horse that's getting really overlooked in the betting gear, and that's the four Just Catherine. I'm not saying she's a massive, massive win candidate, but she has run some fast races, including a second to Randomized, who was the runner-up for the Eclipse and for three-year-old champion. And I thought that she's an awfully big price right now at 17 to 1. Do you give her much of a sniff, Polly? I give her a big sniff in here, to be honest with you. I mean, her numbers stack up in here. Maybe a lot of people don't know Jose Jimenez and JC Diaz, but you're getting 14-1 to 1 on a horse that, you know, I don't care if it was a four-horse field. You ran a 94 buyer. This horse has run well at different racetracks. It seems like she's gotten better and better as she's gotten older. She ran a decent race. You can throw out the one race at Parks. I mean, she's done nothing wrong. Uh, here, here's the thing, Andy, and, and- – her number, her best is good enough to compete, but it seems like when she's stepped up and faced the best, when she's raced against graded stakes company, she hasn't been able to bring her best. That's a, that's a very fair point. I, I'm not going to argue that. And I, listen, I don't think she's necessarily good. If, if Hot and Sultry and Shotgun Honey run their A races, I think we all agree, Greg, that they're yes. way the horses to beat. But I think that Just Catherine is knocking on the door. And I'll put it this way. Why is she, th- well, she just went down from 17 to 13, but why is she two times the price of comparative? And, Paul, I know you and I, we look at a lot of the same figures, too. Ice Orchid at 10 to 1 right now, did she interest you at all? Well, she's very interesting on numbers, and she's the kind of horse that always gets good sheet numbers, Greg. You know that as well. She's a very good sheet horse in this race. Um, she's been three wide her last three races. But I, I wonder sometimes if, she, if she's one of those horses that confuses you on the sheets because she always seems to run second, yet she always, always gets the best number. In comparative, on Thoroughgrass, which I use, Ice Orchid got two numbers better than Butterbean last time. But she kind of does that all the time, Greg, and I'm just worried that, okay, oh, is she kind of one of those sucker type of horses? You know what I mean? Could be 10 to 1 right now. Maybe she could get a piece of it. Is she, does she have that will to win, though, to, right. to get the victory? But, it's a good, fair question. But the other question is, you're looking at, exo- you're looking at exact as her tries. And I think she's a usable horse at that price in there. Maybe you don't think she's a major win candidate, but she can get a piece of this race, and she's an awfully big price. I am still shocked, guys, that the number nine shotgun hottie is still nine to two. And I know that a lot of money comes in the last flash, but I, I really thought there was a chance she could vie for favoritism um, with the number seven in this and, race. And, and here's the thing with shotgun hottie. It's not, you look at her last race and beating search results, that was last summer, and everyone's, well, what went wrong? Was there an injury? Why was she side? This was the plan. Cherie DeVoe stating, stating after that win in the Molly Pitcher, like, we want to give her some time off and ramp up for a big five-year-old campaign. So it's not like she's coming back from an injury. This was the plan. They mm-hmm. executed it. And I'm excited to see what Shotgun Hottie does in her five-year-old debut. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, Cherie's such a good conditioner as well she's had this horse at fairgrounds that's where her stable is right now so you know both horses coming in from fairgrounds hot hot and sultry and shotgun hottie i I have a feeling just the odds are getting swayed over the way the racetrack has played and it's played towards a little bit towards front end but if you look at shotgun hottie she's a horse that can rate right off the lead and i would think after being in this layoff she might be a little frisky so i would think she'd show a little bit more speed i can see this race laying seven you know with the nine right there and within striking distance now is the seven going to clear off from this from this field we'll see i mean she probably will at, at all costs but you know how fast will she go will be the determination but i think the nine sits that trip and you know andy's thinks the four, you know the four i'm in agreement i think the four i think the two and i also think the five butter being 
I know the numbers aren't great. I just think she's in very good form right now. I thought she ran a very good race. You know, she's a type of closer where she needs a lot of pace. And in, in that short field last time, she, she, I thought she ran better than looked. All about race shape for Butterbean, uh, taking advantage of that mistletoe when the pace was hot. She didn't quite get the setup in her more recent, but good enough to close up and finish third. Butterbean, final thoughts, Andy? Yeah, I just want to say a key to the race is how aggressive Manny Franco is with comparative. I don't think she's as fast as Hotch and Sultry, but I think he could make her work a little bit in the early stages. That's a key to me to the how this race is run. Hot and sultry, one to catch, one to beat. We're about to find out. She's odds on it is post time for the grade three Bayakoa live from Oakland on Fox Sports 2. Shotgun hottie to the outside. We're ready to go. And uh, Laroff in the Bayakoa Stakes and Hot and Sultry, the big favorite, stumbled badly at the start. She was expected to be on the lead, and right now she's dead last after that. And also, just Catherine had to slam on the brakes in the early stages. So those two, not good getaways for them. Comparative in the Godolphin Blue, she finds herself in front. Leads by a touch more than a length. Shotgun Huddy off the layoff here, a little bit fresh, running in the second position. Misty Vale in the third spot, then Ice Orchid, the Alice look between horses, a three-deep scratch cat with that party. They're four ahead of Butterbean with just Catherine and Hotted Sultry after the disastrous break is last right now. She's running at least 10 lengths behind down the back stretch. Comparative and Manny Franco, a neck in front, shotgun hottie Christian Torres there to apply more heat and these two ding-dong approaching the half-mile pole. They're a length and a half clear of Misty Vale, then Scratch Cat, Ice Orchid to the inside, the Alice look shaken up She's in the sixth position, now racing four lengths behind, under some pressure into the turn. Just Catherine, Butterbeaner next, and Hotted Sultry has yet to pass a runner. They round the far turn, match race on the lead, comparative inside, shotgun Heidi's right there. Misty Vale gets a reminder in the three path to get going. Here she comes. Misty Vale to challenge the early leaders now at the quarter pole with Ice Orchid right behind them. The others well behind as they swing off the turn. Misty Vale has gotten a great trip. Here she comes to pass on the early leaders. Comparative trying to fight back. Shotgun Hottie struggles between horses. Ice Orchid down the extreme outsides, rolling home. Misty Veil, vale, Comparative and Ice Orchid grandstand side. Comparative game as the day is long. She's come back and if Comparative's going to win it. Comparative, Manny Franco steal the Bayakoa in ultra game fashion. Ice Orchid second, then Misty Veil vale and Butterbean and Shotgun Hottie. A dramatic Bayakoa from start to finish. Comparative holds on at the start. The heavy favorite, hot and sultry, anticipated front runner down to her knees getting out of the blocks. Yeah, just an unfortunate situation for hot and sultry. Ricardo Santano, just nothing he could do. And when that situation, you just want to take your horse back and just, you know, kind of relax her. But again, I've been telling you, ho horses on the front end, have been hot and Manny Franco took a full advantage of it. And like I said, Ice Orchid just doesn't have that winning punch and Comparative gets it done. Let's get over to Richie standing by with winning trainer Brad Cox. Richie. Yeah, I'm here with Brad and Brad, this was a very game performance. One thing Comparative shown is the ability to fight and she really fought through the lane. Yeah, a little bit like she did last time at Aqueduct there. She dug in and uh, really responded well. Manny picked her up the last bit there and uh, big win. I mean, this is a Big pad, Philly, the big pedigree, and to get a greatest stake win is huge. Yeah, she wound up up on the pace it, 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 when Hot and Sultry stumbled. Did you expect her to be that close? I haven't watched all the races here today, but the ones I've watched, speed has been really, really good. And horses are going fast, and they're not backing up, so I told him to be very aggressive, and uh, he was. He did a good job. Congratulations. Awesome job. Guys, she was game. That was a fight to the finish. Tough as nails. In the stretch, she kept digging, and at an inside the eighth pole, Paul says to me, Ice Orchid is not going to get by her. She just doesn't. I mean, I, I called it through the stretch. You could tell the six, and Manny Franco's so strong finishing, and I just forget. I get to watch back in New York on tape, but to see it live, he's just so strong. And Ice Orchid, you know, she just runs an honest race every time. She just likes to say hi to her friends. And, and disappoint, <laughs> disappointing <laughs> effort and shotgun hottie, and for uh, the favorite hot and sultry like uh, Clayton Kershaw in the NLDS last year, over before it started. Comparative takes full advantage. We're saying goodbye to our viewers on Fox Sports 2. You'll see the nightcap from Oaklawn 
on YouTube as comparative. Godolphin, Brett Cox, Manny Franco in town celebrate the win in the Bayacoa. We'll see you over on YouTube. His coverage continues from Oakland. Welcome back, America's Day at the Races here on YouTube, where we just saw a thrilling finish in the Bayacoa, a dramatic finish, well, from start to finish, with hot and sultry yeah. over before it started, stumbling, leaving the blocks, and comparative, just kept on digging, fighting, clawing her way to a win in the Bayacoa. Yeah, I mean, Manny Franco just took advantage of what the pace scenario is, and Brad Cox just said it, if you just missed it, uh, to Richard Migliori that, listen, horses have not been backing up today on the front end. Let's be aggressive. And when the seven, the other speed in here, did not break well, Comparative had a little bit extra there towards the end. As you're going to see, and I've said this before, the two just had a great trip and a tremendous, tremendous ride by Chris Landeros. All he can do, but he starts getting sideways or she starts getting sideways and looks like she's just going to blow on by. It looks like the six at one point here is going to run in third or fourth because Butterbean started rolling here, the five, but she just digs in an ice orchid. She likes to just say, hello, how you guys doing? She doesn't really like to go by, but man, she gives a good effort every time, but don't take anything away from the winner. And listen, congratulations to Godolphin. They lost uh, Maycox Bay out of the Southwest, a late scratch but they get the W here in the Bayacoa. The Pippin as a prep when you're comparing it to a race that Hot and Sultry exited last fall and Shotgun Hottie, it didn't look like it stacked up. The one, two, three finishers out of the Pippin come back and run two, three, four here in the Bayacoa, just not enough to reel in. Comparative, as you mentioned, Godolphin with May Cox Bay being out and coming off of another stellar year in North America. Mm -hmm. Five Eclipse Awards, a fourth consecutive year as North America's outstanding owner, third consecutive year, North America's outstanding breeder, the two-year-old Philly champion, and Cody's Wish champion, older horse and horse of the year. Did they sign Otani too? Because it seems like Blue's been the, 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 the could, narrative this could, year. They could afford him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, I mean. Embarrassment of riches, but let's let's be honest. You know they breed great horses, and their horses have been running well. They bring them to the right trainers, and Brad's done well with them. So have other trainers, Owen Hardy. You can go on and on throughout the Godolphin list, but yeah, Blue's been the trend in 2023, and I don't think it's going to stop in 2024. No, and with this daughter of Street Sense in comparative and uh, flashing her speed, her guts, her determination uh, for hot and, and sultry, Joan Lee blog said before the race she doesn't like to watch the races her horses are running in yeah. and then there's a perfect example of, of why she may have been shielded. Well, the disappointment with that start. is is you, do you run her long again because you didn't get the answer there's a line right through that so, yeah it's a line through so now do you do you have to run her again long to see what happens see and you can see right there the cross country pick five follow along 39,000 in that pool and i got busted who carlos martin picked by the way was 20 to 1 on the morning line so that horse might even play even bigger so your payoff's got to be pretty nice going into this 10th race. One left, 10th and final coming up here. And let's check in with the winning rider, Manny Franco, standing by with Richie. Thanks, Lafita. So pleased to be here with Manny Franco, who's been leading rider in New York now three years in a row. Uh, Manny, this is your first trip to Oakland. I, I, I'm assuming you like it pretty much. Man, I love it. I've been loving it so far, so I'm just happy to, you know, to get these this win for Cos and Godolphin. She's a nice feeling that she's been running well for me back home in New York, so I just had to follow her and um, just happy to get to get the win. She looks like a filly that really likes a fight. She doesn't like to get past. No, she 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 always tries hard, and all the time he, she feel a horse. Uh, she did it last time. She she another horse engaged her and she just keep fighting, and that's what she did today. She. She felt the pressure and she was, she was hard to, to get by and you see, she, she don't give up. Manny, you, you're here with your wife, your, your, your two daughters. I mean, they, they well, one daughter, okay, but I saw two little girls there. But you, you, you brought your family with you. How meaningful is it to have them here when you win a race like this? It means a lot because uh, they are my biggest support. 
every time I, I you know, I, I, I get out at uh, home, I just, um, you know, try to, to, to make it back safe home. And every time I have to, the chance to take them with me, I just do it, and that's what I did. They come with me, they fly with me, and we, here we are. Congratulations, a terrific ride. And guys, I think these Comparative and Manny Franco are a match made in heaven. They both like a fight and no stronger finisher than Manny Franco. So active in the saddle, so aggressive, finishing strong with Comparative. Another massive year for Manny Franco. Uh, once again on the New York Racing Association circuit, uh, leading all jockeys in terms of wins. Steady Eddie, right? I mean, you could just name so many of them over there. And Irad obviously winning the Eclipse Award. Javier Castellano not even getting on the ballot. And you got a guy like Manny Franco. I mean, it's just it's the, what they have, the colony there in New York, it was just rider after rider. Jose Lascano, you can just go on and on. And for him to come down here just brings a little bit more to the table here at Oakland. Right back at it tomorrow. Afternoon, oh, school uh, night, get some shut eye. We yeah, have a big day, yeah, big day racing. Definitely school night. I got my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Listen, peanut, don't, I mean, Mitch, our producer, Amir. I got my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I got my apples and caramel. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Southwest Stakes Saturday. Andy and Greg. And yeah, for, for trainer Brad Cox, who has an awesome road in tomorrow's Southwest, he has a, a several three year olds on the Derby Road, and he has won, what is it, like six of the last 13 Derby preps here at Oakland Park. Been pretty dominant. Paulie my, making my son jealous listening to the show. He's having the same dinner as my son. Um, look, big, big weekend on the road to the Triple Crown. Here in New York with the Withers, Southwest, obviously. Fierceness back in action as well. It's going to be a busy Saturday. Yeah, I think we're all interested to see what Fierceness does down at Gulfstream Park. He's obviously the, the leader of the division, but there are going to be horses that move forward, now whether it's in the Withers or the Southwest. And, and I think that Brad's a very strong hand with light line, the 8-5 to five morning line favorite. It's going to be tough to beat. Don't think he's much of a factor with Awesome Road. That Southwest seems open. Lost a big player in Maycox Bay. But looking forward to both races and talking about them. They're much more wide open races. And it's fun this time of the year to see horses develop and see who are the horses that can move forward. Todd Pletcher with a gun runner coming off a maiden win at a mile and an eighth making just the third start of his career in the Withers as well. And that Southwest, probably he's open a, a derby prep that you're going to see all year long. Could, couldn't agree more. And, and I'll tell you something, the horse I think I'm looking forward to seeing the most on tomorrow's card is running in the American Beauty, and that's Alva Star. Yeah. Uh, we're all big fans after seeing her in the Prioress last year, and she could be a major player, and it's a cool story as well. And hopefully... If she's in the winner's circle, the jockey will be wearing the right silks this time. They won't have to make that rush back to get the right ones. I'm looking forward to seeing her, but this is a terrific day of racing. Okay, she'll be down at uh, Tampa as well. we got a busy, busy Saturday afternoon for you, packed with stakes action. Hope you join us to catch it all on America's Day at the Races. Be sure and check your local listings for start time. We begin at 1230 Eastern time on FS2. Busy day on the road to the Triple Crown tomorrow. What a performance. Brad Cox, comparative, makes it three in a row with the win.